Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode two of Dream Daddy. <laughs> Hi. Oh my gosh. Uh, so you can see the. Oh, oh we got it. We got to put on the dulcet tones of the Dream Daddy theme song. There we go. There we yeah, go. I didn't think that. Yeah. No, it wasn't on. It was. It was on. The joke doesn't work when you can't hear the music. Okay. Okay. Well, as you know from last week, uh, we're nines hundreds. We're gay and we're new in town. Although we're not as new in town because this is episode two. We've been here for like two days. Uh, and yeah, so we're getting to know the neighborhood of dads, and as you also know, we're going after the Gavin dad, Robert, who has lots of knives and probably smells like cigarettes. So, you know, we just have a type, okay? Uh, let us know if the game audio and, uh, like, audio, audio, mic audio is balanced and everything. Um, I noticed it was kind of loud on the mic last time, so I've turned it down a little, and adjusted some things so hopefully I've, I've also like moved it a little farther away and more between us so you can you can hear both of our amazing voice acting talents throughout the night <laughs> all uh, right i don't know if it's just me but i'm getting really distracted by the dream daddy oh okay so, so all right so 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 let's just continue then <laughs> oh my god oh well look at all these save points that it gave us eight fifteen ten uh robert's eight one well, this is at the end. Oh, okay, 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 it's okay. Probably the top one. Probably the top one. Most of the recent. Okay, Amanda accepted. Oh, wait, what? Oh, that's a spoiler. Okay. I guess she gets accepted to a college or something. <laughs> ah, thanks for the raid, Maximilian. Just in time Ow. to start. What you do when you don't have to will determine where you'll be when you can't help it. Dad advice. That's, that's true. That true sounds advice. like something nines would say. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Ninja, and Will, and Riven Red Paladin for the subscriptions. Wonderful. All right. So I've also got the window actually the right size this week, which is fantastic. Oh, wow. Uh, wow. That's, that's a whole thing that we dealt with last week was the window not being the right size. Look at size. that. It fits It in fits. The it ships. All right. But I ship it because we're going to continue shipping Robert 900s. <laughs> All right. Ah, afternoon uh, word jumble, like a dad would. We hear the mail truck pull through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we got any coupons today. We are glowing today and looking very pretty. Well, thank you, Maximilian. Uh, Austin decided to um, be in Friday casual this time instead of showing me up with a K-pop dress as he did last time. Uh, I, I just, I don't know. Today feels a lot more tired than last time. I agree, I agree. I probably will need a, a Coke in like 45 minutes at 8.45 at night. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the nice mail person, oh, nice mail people, slides a couple letters in a large yellow envelope through the slot. It takes a couple of tries for them to get it in because it's just so hard. My coupons! <laughs> <laughs> Take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Uh, this is the first time Maximilian actually gets to see what we interpreted him as in Dream Daddy. So that's you. That's We gave you the cat shirt because we were like, if it's Maximilian's nines, it has to have a cat shirt. So there you go. <laughs> I, I definitely think he should get that shirt in real life for sure. I knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on, as children do. Amanda? She yells through the door. Dad! What? I have something for you. I'm kind of busy right now, and you come back later. <laughs> okay, I just thought you'd want this big ol' envelope we got from HIA. What is it? What, uh, the, the, the Harvard Institute of Art. Institute of Art. Hey, she comes out. The Horn Institute. Oh, well, I thought it was Harvard. I was being Horny? far too ambitious for you, dear. I mean, if you're busy, I can come back later, you know. You know. <laughs> if you're still deciding on the menu. Father, please. I hand her the envelope, which she tears open with her teeth. She's... Just like father, like son. <laughs> like, like father, like daughter. <laughs> Whatever, what is gender? That's probably bad for your teeth. She doesn't hear me and spits out a piece of envelope. Well, at least she doesn't eat it. She pulls out the letter and unfolds it. 
and uh, the suspense is killing me. This is her dream school. Fuck that other one that rejected her. This one's the real dream school. What's happening? I wasn't spoiled by the menu save option. I don't know whether she gets accepted or not. Her face is unreadable. I can't, but you, you, I can't you, believe you're it. lying. I can't believe you're it. lying. <laughs> oh, honey, it's okay if you didn't. I got in. Oh, I got in. You know what I got into last night? I haven't told you about my date with. <laughs> I got into trouble and the movies. <laughs> Amanda tosses. No, you, you didn't get into the pants. I didn't. I, I got into trouble and I got into the movies. That's what happened. Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big hug. Raid again. Oh, wait, another raid? Oh, Macachino! Macachino, who we can apparently order at the coffee shop, according to Austin, as of last week. I, I get distracted by the words. <laughs> Congrats, sweetie. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you, even though I've never heard of this school and who knows if it's accredited. You know what? It's art. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god, I can't believe I got in. Well, you know, they're like 700th in the nation. It was probably not that. We've you lived, know what? We've I'm lived proud here of you. For, for two days, and look what I've already done to this room. Yeah, that's true. You have really. Wow, lava lamps? Kids still have lava lamps these and days. And I'm planning on going to college. Right. You got in. You're a great student. You nailed the interview. Your photography is incredible. This all happened off screen in the past two days because she got rejected from another college like yesterday. Wow, they forwarded the mail well. Too. Oh my god. Wait. Wait, Dad, <laughs> Dad, wait, wait. I know this one's really expensive and it's so far away. It, it is. I think for a moment it was one of the most expensive schools that she applied to, but I know she's had her heart set on it for the longest time. Usually, that means that it's a for-profit college, and it's just going to be terrible. <laughs> I know it looks like a big school, but it's really just It'll away. be tough, but we'll make it work, because you're my only family. <laughs> really? Well, I'm- well, of course, assuming that I don't run away with the hot guy next door. Maybe you could date, like, a rich guy instead of a scummy-looking- Well, you don't know he's not rich. <laughs> Leather's expensive. Leather is expensive, so are cigarettes. She hugs me again. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> okay, sweetie, we're celebrating tonight. Dinner, your choice. Whatever you want, except eggs, because apparently I can't make those. But that's what I wear on my jacket. Yeah. Oh, wherever. Whenever, wherever. Oh, oh, oh my God, we're going to Bahama Breeze. <laughs> we walk along the base side, tearing into our foil wrapped burritos. Oh, never mind. We're, we're, not, we're not classy enough for Bahama Breeze. We're gonna we get burritos from a food truck. We are saving up for college. <laughs> oh, thank you, Maximilian, for the gift sub, and have a good night. I Although, know you've had a long day. Huh? Those, uh, th th those food trucks are not cheap. Oh, no, they're not. Those burritos were probably $17. You could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. Cost was not a determining factor. And yet you picked the $17 burritos. We could have gone to McDonald's. You were begging for it last week. <laughs> Please, Dad, you know I'm a simple gal. Just give me a Rito and a view. Well, this is quite a view. I can't say I'm mad. We sit in a patch of grass and watch ships sail lazily through the bay. Since when do we live on the coast? Where, where is this place? It's the bay. If I it's know sunset, we're. I know we're new in town, but where are we? If it's sunset, and we're on the bay, this is probably the west coast. Sure. Okay, so so something about a student something ID. Something about dorms. Amanda, slow down. You're gonna choke on your burrito, and then, then, then you're not gonna get to go to college. I know. I'm just excited. Did I mention students get their own IDs? <laughs> their own IDs and everything. A studio space when they're seniors. Oh wow! And you get Photoshop for free. Well, that's worth the price of admission. It kind of is. It's nice to see Amanda so enthusiastic, but I wish she wouldn't and do it. And we get licensed versions of Winrar. God, I, I. I wish that she wouldn't chew with her mouthful. That's that's so uncouth. I wonder who my roommate's gonna be. You, you take a survey online and they match you with someone with similar major or interest or something like that. We could be best oh, friends. Oh no, you're not. You're going to hate each other. All you're going to do is see each other as competition. Okay, so here's the thing. Oh, Craig and I, we were roommates. And we <laughs> yeah, were, roommates. were roommates. Um, When I did the roommate matching thing, 
in they real life? Out, yes. Wait, this is a thing that they do? Yes. Oh, this is a whole part of life I've never known. It worked out far better than when I picked people that I thought I'd actually like. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, okay, so so how did this go, Austin? I, I got confused because someone said that I had lice. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> well, that's, how, that's how I met Willis. Okay. And Willis was a perfectly good roommate. Willis was a good roommate, the only, the only well, Keith. Willis and Keith were your only good roommates. The rest of them were trash. Keith I met through a mutual friend who was gay. <laughs> the, the mutual friend. You're going to have to catch me up on your college adventures later. <laughs> <laughs> a good roommate can be a lifelong friend or somebody you don't keep up with for 15 years and then randomly run into again on the street. But don't even get me started on bad roommates. I'm just kidding. We didn't have bad roommates. Only one other roommate was a puppy that Craig brought home one night. We spent a semester fabricating a story about our new foreign exchange student who had a really bad cough and sounded just like a dog's bark. It's a fish. Carl ruled. <laughs> it's a fish. You can keep fish as pets. Ah, oh, thank you for the cheers. Rainbow cheers, rainbow cheers. And if you can convince the RA that it's oh, a fish. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Just, you get to just try it. to decide what, what pet to get. I'm, I'm like, They're I, all fish. I'm going to leave that to you. If it's in a tank, it's a fish. Well, she's so excited and I don't want to disappoint her, but I need to be real for a second. So, you know, I had that talk with Mr. Vega. I'm a senior. I already got accepted, so no longer does this school matter. Yeah, you could just quit. Mm -hmm. Oh my, what? He didn't tell you about the dumpster what? fire, no. did he? What? No. I, what? <laughs> I don't want to put a damper on the good news, but I need you to knock it out of these park, the, the park, these last few months. If you really want to go to Horns, we need that scholarship money. But I've already been accepted. But we don't have the money yet. But. You don't have the scholarship. I'm sure that the last few months they don't think. I know that. you can do it. SAT 1600, here we go. Okay, is that a score you can get on the SAT? I don't know, it's been years. I promise I'll try harder. I pat I her on the back. I don't even have to take the SAT for my next uh, college entry. Do you think you can handle a 14 hour drive to come home for the holidays? There's gonna be some treacherous ice roads to cross and we just can't afford that $200 plane ticket. Well, if we're on the west coast, I probably have to drive through fires Oh, and too. there's also Mothman, you gotta, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be worth it if I get to see you. My eyes immediately well with dad tears. <laughs> oh, dad, don't cry. People talking to well, you. Well, sorry, I'm just, I'm very, very proud of you. You're all grown up and you're such a good person. And I hope you know how important you are to me until I hook up with the dad next door and he'll be the most important. And I'll, I'll love being single again. You won't be single. Shut up! <laughs> Dad, you're gonna make me cry too. It's too late, honey. It's happening. <laughs> Dad, I can't get tears in my burrito. It's gonna taste it's bad. It's seasoning! I pull Amanda in for a hug and kiss her on the forehead. And Love then, you, kiddo. she licks your chin. And, and we, we lick each other. That's our thing. <laughs> Love you, Pops. Exercise regularly and you'll stay healthy. Well, fuck that. Dads. Oh, oh, so I could, in theory. You've got dads. Oh Look. my god. Who are the. Why are you messaging me? Why is this a group chat? <laughs> Damien and Hugo. Why am I getting a group chat that says you up? You up? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going for my, my fella. I gotta put another heart in that heart Robert bar. Robert Small? Robert Small. Yes, yeah, so I made a 1300 on the SAT out of 1600, which was enough to get a scholarship. But at the time, it was like 2400 because there was also writing, but it only half counted. Nobody really cared. It yeah, was, nobody cared about the writing. It was odd. Thing. I don't even know if they still have that. Who knows? I had a lot of fun with Robert the last time we hung out. We, we threw 
uh, wine bottles at stop signs and I accidentally vandalized a car. Yeah, they, we snuck illegally into the movies. We watched a rom-com and we almost punched a bunch of 13 year olds in the face. It was a fantastic date. He's my soulmate. You I can't kill him for I you? can't wait to see what we do next. It was especially great once Mary finally decided to fuck off because she was a real third wheel for that first half. Man, I hope she doesn't join this next time. I have a lot of fun with Robert the last time we hung out, but I'm beginning to wonder if he's dodging me. I tried messaging him and Dadbook says he hasn't even read them. I haven't even seen him come out of his house. Is he dead? <laughs> I sent him one last message, figuring that'll produce the same result. Hey man, I don't know where you've been, but we should grab a drink soon. I- I know- are you avoiding me? Is this what ghosting is? Amanda, is this what ghosting is? I walk away from my computer because at this point I know he's not messaging me back anytime soon. Sigh. I linger in the kitchen. I'm all caught up on work. The house is clean. Maybe I should do something nice for Amanda. Ah, the parenting part of this game. I'll bake her favorite pie! <laughs> I root through the pantry and pull out the ingredients. This is an old family recipe that I used to make my, with my grandmother when I was a kid. I lost the recipe card, but I'll be able to remember how to bake it. Oh, wow, this is Michelle Simulator 2020. I hey, you have such a fascinating way of cooking. I, well, yes, it's always like this, it, this ingredient list is flour, eggs, and butter. And I'm like, well, I'm out of flour, so I'll grind up some almonds, and I'm out of eggs, so I'll use applesauce. And I always expect it to come out the same. <laughs> and, since, and it doesn't, somehow. And instead of butter, I'm going to use olive oil. Yes, butter, olive oil, but olive oil for butter, applesauce for eggs, and uh, ground up almonds for flour. I, you think I'm joking, but that's pretty close to something I actually tried. But it's once. so funny because, like, <laughs> you're so specific about following the instructions until you're really until really it comes not. to the ingredients. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't need butter, but whatever it is that I choose, damn it, I'm gonna have a cup and a fourth of it. <laughs> <laughs> I throw some cherries into a saucepan to make the filling. Normally, I don't like to multitask, but this cherry pie is a piece of cake. Or a piece of pie. Whatever. Cherry? I'm making a pie. <laughs> oh man. I can't- She's I can't re cherry pie. I, I can't remember what's happening. Oh, you left me hanging. What temperature you're supposed to set the oven at? It's probably 375, that sounds right. Who am I kidding? I'm never wrong when it comes to this pie. My special twist on the recipe includes a secret ingredient that not even Amanda knows about it. It makes the cherries extra flavorful. More cherries. It's called bourbon. Why can't I remember what the secret ingredient is? You know, it's probably almond extract. Uh, it's always almond extract and almonds taste like cherries. Oh, yeah! yeah. See? It's, See? Both See? of our answers are there. See? Oh, yes. Wait, more cherries? Uh -huh. I just, I'm just like, no, it's gotta be almond extract. Like, See? I know how to bake! Well, it's supposed to be a cherry pie, but I don't have any cherries, so I'm gonna use strawberries and just it's, douse them in Di Sirono. It's almond extract, duh. Oops, I accidentally poured all of the bottle in. Oh, God, baking is an art. And I... I make mistakes. I finally get the pie in the oven. How long am I supposed to leave it in there? 50 minutes? Ah, whatever. Until, Until it's burnt. Until it looks okay. <laughs> she's gonna be so excited. She's going to be... She's going to be drunk off almond extract. I have a seat at the kitchen table and do word jumbles until Amanda comes home and I can hear the door slam open. Because slam you can definitely open. slam you... open a door. <laughs> Yo, Pops, what smells like pie in here? I don't know, kid. Maybe it's pie. It's, it's pie, sweetie. <laughs> she darts over to the oven and looks inside. Right. Yes. Hey, it's, it's not done, I think. Be patient. <laughs> What's your angle here? Uh, well, maybe 90 degrees. Actually, 375 degrees to be exact. That's what I guess is the uh, temperature. Hmm. Pies are objective-based confection. What are you trying to get out of me? Uh, oh, no, it's it's not an objective-based confection. It's an affection-based confection. I love you. An affection confection? I've been leading a double life. I am actually a pie baker. <laughs> Oh no, I'm a pro skateboarder and aspiring astronaut and bank robber. I am a pro skater who is 
also a sea captain. Or so president of space? That's what I was. President of space. The lifestyle is calling me. I got one last job. You know how it is. And I gotta bring up high. It was the only way I knew how to tell you. Yeah. Well, I appreciated the years we spent together, but a trade-up is a trade-up. Uh, remember me when... Oh, wait, wait, uh, wait. Remember <laughs> me when you're kicking up your feet in Ibiza. Thanks for all the pop. Oh, don't thank me yet. It's not done. <laughs> we share a cordial handshake. I wait a few more minutes before taking the pie out of the oven. Uh, set it on a rack to cool and guard it so Amanda doesn't dig into it before it's ready with her fingers into a pie like a menace. Huh. <laughs> what? Huh. It's kind of weird. N no, no, it doesn't. It does not look weird. It's weird. That's, that's me taking artistic license and what a cherry pie means to me emotionally. I'm just saying this because, you know, it seems like you might have baked this pie okay, incorrectly. Okay, how does it look wrong to you? Do you think I baked this pie inside out? Like, what did I do? <laughs> and you're currently right now trying to pass it off as a good thing. You know what? It's deconstructed pie. That's all we have to say. Huh? It's art. It's art! <laughs> Was it art when you accidentally baked a whole uncracked egg into the center of my 12th birthday cake? I really thought you were going to tell me that I somehow baked a whole uncracked egg into the center of this pie, and I really wondered where we skipped that part. <laughs> well, it's... Oh no, oh no. Uh, what? What? Like what? Art when you tried to... <laughs> what? <laughs> Make brownies and accidentally created chlorine gas. Yes! Uh, art! <laughs> Was it art when you... Eat the fucking pie! Manda, panda... <laughs> I cut us a few slices and we sit down to eat. The cherry filling oozes out of the sides and the buttery crust, crust glistens. I watch as she takes up. What's so wrong with this pie? Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Oh, what? What? Is it not good? Oh, no. Oh, it's, I mean, is it hot? Uh. No, no, it's just burn the heck out of the roof of my mouth. This is really making me in the mood for pie. This pie is amazing. Sorry for doubting you. I do not know how you could ever have doubted me, Amanda. <laughs> I breathe a sigh of relief and take a bite. It's incredible as it always is. I'm really proud of you for making a I'm pie without burning the house down. proud of you. I got a few dad tricks up my dad's sleeves. Maybe fathers aren't all bumbling and stupid as the media makes us out to be. Maybe we as a society should have a little bit more respect for fathers as a whole. Hey. Dad. Your sleeve is on fire. Oh, God. I run to the sink and put myself out. Ah. Amanda and I clean up the kitchen and play a little more living room hoops before she retreats to her room to do homework. I go back to my word jumbles. Hey, this one spells cat. Is Robert ever going to text me back? Not if you don't check your computer. The rest of the evening trickles by. We eat dinner, which is going to... Is, is something, I don't know, probably Chinese uh, takeout. That's perfectly fine for dinner. Yes, and breakfast and lunch. I help Amanda with one of her scholarship applications and we get ready for bed. <gasps> was the burrito not for dinner? That was yesterday. Keep up. I decided to check dad book one last time before I climb into bed. I can just imagine him on his phone, like curling up in a bed being like, did Robert text me back? Are you oh, kidding? He doesn't so... do this on his phone. Oh, <laughs> Still nothing from Robert. I hope he's okay. I turn out the lights and lie down. Oh, oh, hey, hey. hey nines, hey. hey. Hey, nines, hey, I'm outside, come outside. Oh, oh my God, oh my God. What is it? I'm just on the verge of falling asleep. I climb out of bed and try to identify the source of the zigging. My computer screen illuminated the dark room. I walk over to it, ready to turn it off when I notice what's happening. Hey. Don't make me honk. What? what? I will honk, get out here. I look at my window and sure enough, there's Robert leaning up against his pickup truck in my driveway. I don't even care. It's 1.30 a.m. and I'm 50. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I open my door and try to figure out what's going on, but who cares? He's hot. Hey. <laughs> hey. hey. <laughs> Want to hang? Always. I, I was kind of sleeping, but who cares? That's not fun. Oh, Come hang you, out. you really are Gavin, aren't you? <laughs> I would argue that sleeping is very fun, but I don't have to be anywhere in the morning. Might as well live a little. What do you do? I'm an this actuary. Is why you don't have money. <laughs> 
I'm ready to go. Yes. Cool. You plan on going out like that? In my cat shirt? What's wrong with my cat shirt? I look down and realize that I am, in fact, not wearing pants. Yes! I'm very ready to hang with you, Robert. I mean, I don't mind. Oh, of course you don't. I, mm, yes, one second. <laughs> I run inside and throw on my going out pants, my shoes and my jacket. I grab my keys and meet Robert back outside. Ready? Now I am. I am ready with my pants. Hop in. Ah. I jump into the passenger seat of his old red pickup. I have to move a few empty cigarette packs and gas station receipts out of the way before I can sit. He silently starts the car and we drive out of the cul-de-sac. I'm really starting to believe that when Gavin Reed was introduced to DPH fandom, all of the Robert stands were just like, that one will make him Robert. Like, I think, I feel like every headcanon we have for Gavin is just this character. I don't know how you silently start up an old pickup. You like Tom Waits? What is he waiting for? Hoist that wreck, baby. <laughs> okay, all the all the eggplants. Uh, I love. Before I can answer, Robert turns up the radio. Yep, that's Tom Waits, all right. <laughs> he he lights a cigarette and cracks the windows. We drive together in silence. Where are we going? <laughs> he doesn't respond. Oh, the music. Are you? Oh no, are you going to murder me? Have I fallen too fast and too hard, Robert? Oh, I heard you. Oh, okay. He still doesn't answer my question. I look out the window and notice he's taking us up the highway. I twiddle my thumbs. Ro Robert, I know you like movies. Have you ever seen Mulholland Drive? <laughs> well, whatever I've gotten myself into, it looks like I'm in it for the night. I, I just... He's got stickers on his, yeah, on yeah, his dash. Yeah, you ever get into a situation where you're just like, this might as well happen? Look at... Look at his car he's got a he's got a pineapple sticker yes he's got a flower in his oh i like his little elephant one too he's got a flower oh in yes oh he definitely he definitely has a kid i mean this wouldn't be a dad dating simulator if he didn't i glance over to robert who's driving intently he looks tired as he always says but there's something a bit more there that i just can't place yeah guess i'll die you know what there's worse ways to go uh at least i'll see something pretty is my last vision are you okay? I like your car. Oh, well, he really likes silence, doesn't he? I, I'm just gonna say nothing. Oh, yeah, he loved that. He loved that I shut the fuck up. I remember what Robert said about hating small talk. I keep my mouth shut. He notices me staring. Stop looking so nervous. Well, I mean, I'm not. I'm not. I'm cool. Nervous? I'm like, ah, 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 I'm not nervous. You're nervous. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. Just hang on. We're almost there. Uh, I, I, nobody knows where I am right now. I should text my daughter. Uh, uh, almost where? I have no idea where we are. I think we're moving in a slight incline, but I'm not sure. I mean, it might be a mountain or some ship, but who knows? We eventually come to a stop. Robert gets out of the car, and I sit for a second, unsure if he wants me to get out, too. I say nothing. <laughs> he pulls out the sniper rifle. Oh, why would he pull out the sniper rifle? <laughs> Might as well take me out back and shoot me. <laughs> what are you waiting for? I hastily exit the car, apparently. He wanted me to get out. He sits in the bed of his truck and pats the space next to him. Oh, is this a date? <laughs> oh. Oh, this is nice. I sit down and take in the view. We're on a hill overlooking the city skyline against the bay. The cool night air rustles some trees near us as lights blink in the distance. Off to the side, I can see an entrance in the dense forest. Oh my god, am I about to lose my virginity in the back of a pickup truck? <laughs> Man, it's all so gorgeous. This is where I come to masturbate. Yep, I am. Uh, what? <laughs> I'm kidding. What's wrong with you? Yeah, why would you go through that much trouble? You have a house. <laughs> This is my little spot where I come to think. It, it's nice. Hmm. You can see the whole city from up here. Really gives you some perspective. I mean, yes, a perspective of the city. D of, d of the city. <laughs> he reaches behind him and pulls something out from under his jacket. It glints in the moonlight, and I realize what it is. Oh shit! It's a knife. <laughs> 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 he 
<laughs> he was really cool. And then, oh shit, it's a knife. Uh, oh. Please don't stop me. <laughs> Robert reaches into his pocket and pulls out a small piece of wood. Wait. You just gonna whittle while we're up here in this car? Please don't stab me with that either. <laughs> Robert takes the knife to the piece of wood and starts carving at it. I'm carving another knife. Oh, I breathe. Oh, yes. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Murder date. How romantic. I agree, Emma. Oh, I breathe a very audible sigh of relief as he looks at me sideways. Did you think I was going to stab you just now? I didn't think. I, I worried. No. Mm, hate to break it to you. But I did, in fact, bring you out here to harvest your organs. Well, take them. I don't need them. I'm an android. Laugh, play along. Aren't those both things? <laughs> I'll play along. Oh, yeah, you know. Uh, that, that's got some real dad vibes. My, my, my kidneys, they, they're, they're a little on the small side. They're a little gamey. I don't know if you want them. I th I, well, well, you think you caught me in your trap, but I knew... For years, I've been putting the most vile drug food in my body in preparation for this day to poison a cannibal. Come at me, friend. Reap what you will. Hey. Two steps ahead of you at all times. That's how I operate. I can pre-construct this moment. Ha, nothing gets past you, huh? <laughs> he reaches into his pocket and pulls out another knife <laughs> and hands it to me. <laughs> I'm going to warn you, the last guy I had in knife fight with lost three fingers okay hold on just a fucking second why did auto mod take hanagram out <laughs> what why why did you have to manually add hanagram <laughs> wow yeah hey basic rules of knife fighting you're familiar correct I watched Ham I, I watched Hamilton, so yes. <laughs> One! <laughs> One! You take ten paces, or maybe that's the eighth step. I don't know. That seems that, near the end. That's pretty, close, that's to pretty end. close to the end. Well, I, I don't remember the lyrics. I can't tell when you're kidding. Mm -hmm. I'm so many levels of irony deep that I've forgotten what humor is. <laughs> we laugh. Ha ha. <laughs> Have you ever whittled before? Fun fact, I took whittling in college. You took woodworking. That whittling what, is a subculture of woodworking. What do you what do you think was really happening in the in the Appalachian Mountains? Well, considering I'm not a grandpa, no, I've never whittled. <laughs> what do you mean by that? I mean you make a very hot old man. <laughs> I just thought you would have a block of wood shipped to you along with your first social security check. Nines, I'll have you know. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Both young mm -hmm. and old. Alike, oh, it's so good. You're pretty. Um, mm -hmm. You're just missing it before you yeah. even tried mm -hmm. it. Speaks yeah. Oh, about oh my God, you smell great. I. Mm, yep. Mm. However, because I've gotten to. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna I... stare at you. I'm just. I'm just gonna. Think of us as friends. I'm willing I, I, to attribute wait, your friends? instead friends? of Alice. Fre friends. Friends. Hmm. What I'm trying to say is. Go get that stick. Oh, I'm gonna get that stick. He motions to a good-looking stick on the... Oh. Perfect for a potential whittle. I pick it up. The most important thing to remember while whittling um, mm -hmm, is to cut mm -hmm, with the grain, mm -hmm. not against it. Oh, um, yeah. Cut yeah, look at grain, me. Look at me whittling. Up, and then your hand's gonna uh -huh, slip, uh -huh. and you're gonna cut your finger so uh -huh. deep that it doesn't stop is bleeding it, for four what days. What about safety? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Getting hurt comes with the territory. Look at my damn hands. Oh, God. <laughs> I look at his damn hands. They're calloused and covered in little white scars. They're very nice hands. <laughs> oh. Can't make a stick omelet without breaking a few hand eggs. That should have been the dad tip. Knife that wood. Oh, it's a mini game. Oh, my God. Oh, they're actually going to make us do this. Oh, wow. Knife the oh, wood. Oh, hello. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Oh. oh, oh, that's not good. Oh, what if I fuck this up? Oh, wow. Look at <laughs> that. Uh, we're, we're, we're really, uh, we're really, uh, wasting a lot. It's a good start. What is it? It is a reinterpretation of the Washington Monument. Knitting. <laughs> 
He's going to think that's lame. Uh, <laughs> Sharp stick. He's going to think that's a poser. He's going to think that's even more lame. <laughs> it's a stick. You know what? You know what? Return you know what? Stick cult? I'm okay with It's a stick. I am a member of the Holy Order of the Sick Cult. Robert, I have brought you here tonight to indoctrinate you into my cult. Careful, don't poke yourself. Oh no, I'm very trained in sticks. I made a stick, and I will keep this stick with me for. E oh, oh, wh what? Uh, what now? Oh, oh, hello. <laughs> Uh, it's, uh, that, it's a tongue Tell depressor. A tongue depressor. I should put that in my first aid kit. You never know when you might need one. Oh, yeah, you never know when you're gonna need to train that gag reflex. <laughs> what, what now? Okay. What's, what's this gonna be? Oh. That's a smaller stick. It's something to make me look tough. It's working. Oh, oh. I think you could take me in a fight, probably. Oh, I could take you in something. Nines. Nines hundreds. Dom energy. <laughs> 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 yeah, have I mentioned yet, three hours into this, that nines is definitely a dom? Are we, are we, keeping, are we keeping that kid? I'm getting a little... <laughs> That's an egg. E egg. Oh. <laughs> Planchette. Hey, chicken nuggets. Wait, don't you like... Aren't, aren't you a witch? Okay, let's go with Ouija board. <laughs> now all you need to do is carve up the board and we're set. <laughs> and also maybe carve up a ghost. Oh, yes. Well, all I have to do is carve in two little eyes and that's basically oh, a ghost. Oh, egg emojis out there. Oh, egg. <laughs> Nothing like a good wood ghost. Yep. <laughs> oh, we're still doing this. Okay. <laughs> so I guess this one will be a ghost, maybe. Hopefully. I don't know. I'm concerned. That's a that's a peep. It's you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know. Self portrait. Myself. Spitting image. I am a you. peep. <laughs> I made a masterpiece. Are we still whittling? <laughs> We're still whittling. They can't get better, right? They can't get better, nope. Um, hmm. Interesting, what do we have? An ambidextrous chopstick. <laughs> it's a stick. Yes, didn't I just tell you that I am a member of the sacred order of the stick cult? This is our thing. Um, I'm gonna let you have this one because I've already made myself one and this gets to be your first stick. You start off with a small one and then eventually oh, you wow, get to- Oh, people are remembering the Ambidex games. You, 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 act, you, you, you get up to, to eventual uh, master mason of the stick cult and then you get a bigger one and it'd be great. <laughs> a cult symbol, yes. I don't want to join Joseph's cult. I'm already in my own cult. It's big. big. It's a big piece of wood. I'm not making much of a... God, it would take... It must be six in the morning by now. <laughs> I've spent all this time whittling. Oh, that's a... That's a... That's actually a nice swan. Swan? Swan. Here, you can have this one. Nice work. The meanest bird. No, Goose is definitely the meanest bird. I mean... Honk, honk, and swan. Swans are pretty freaking vicious. That's true. Um, um, uh, where are we going? Where are we go? Where are we going with this? Oh my god, I'm getting really... Oh, wow, that's a horse. I call it... Sir Horsington the Brave after my daughter's horse. Big old dog. Spirit of the Mustang. How poetic. <laughs> who, who, who ends up with all of these whittles? Ah, we're done. Okay. Good tire pressures, just so you know. 
Robert and I sit in silence for a while, carving our wood. I think I'm kidding. <laughs> That's what they're calling it these days. That's uh, what he said we were going up yeah, here for. Masturbation. I think it's kind of relaxing. <laughs> 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 I glance over to see what he's working on. Oh, he's carving a, another knife. <laughs> ah. Well, I'm distracted. The knife slices into my thumb. Oh, no, I'm bleeding. Um. Oh. Um. <laughs> He's lost in carving. He doesn't notice me bleeding any. <laughs> Can you imagine just like sitting next to this hot date and bleeding everywhere and just trying to like hide it behind your back? Uh, uh, what was that first aid kit you were talking about? He still doesn't notice. I, I'm dying. I'm, I'm bleeding to death. Just, you know, but you're the last thing I'll ever see and it'll be fine. He finally looks over. Reaches into his jacket. Jesus, how much stuff does he keep in there? And he pulls out a red bandana, wraps it around my thumb. Hold tight. He hops off the truck. I can hear him rummaging around in his car. He comes back with a well-stocked first aid kit. I thought he said safety doesn't matter. He carefully wipes all the blood off my hand and wipes a bit of antiseptic on the cut. With surprising gentleness, he rubs his coarse, callous, beautiful hands all over my bleeding wound and places a gauze on it and wraps it up. And Robert it's... seems like the let's put super glue on it type of guy. He probably will. Oh. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> he hands me what's left of the antiseptic. Uh, make sure you keep that cut clean. Uh, yeah, it's 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 oddly touching, and I lean over and it's uh, 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 sexy, sexy to injure yourself and have a man notice. <laughs> I guess I'm a real whittler now. That you are. Be careful, though. They're attracted to the smell of blood. They? Who's they? <laughs> Cryptids. Tons of them out here, you know. Mothman. But Mothman is a friend to all people. <laughs> Cryptids like Mothman and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mothman is bullshit. Oh yeah. no, no, it's not. A no, hot he's not. He's not. Mothman is real, and he's my best friend. <laughs> You're joking. Mm. Oh, how I wish I were. I'm skeptic myself, or at least I thought I was. There are things in these woods that. We can't possibly comprehend. What, did you have some sort of Paul on the road to Rome experience with, like, a cryptid? <laughs> uh, a chupacabra? So strange. <laughs> <laughs> I think about my entire time in this city. Aside Jesus is a cryptid? <laughs> <laughs> it's the first thing I can think of. <laughs> That's what he made it sound like. He's just like, I was I was a skeptic too until one day I changed. And it's just like, all I can imagine is Paul on the road to Rome and then the chupacabra comes out and just changes him forever. And now I'm a Christian. <laughs> aside, aside from the occasional coyote, I don't think it's too bad. You ever hear of the Dover ghost? I have heard of the Dover ghost. Is Are we in Dover? <laughs> is it that in England? I don't think so. No, no, the Dover ghost is like, that thing in the Appalachian Hills. This doesn't look like Appalachia. Hey. I was out in the woods here on a weekend camping with Betsy. Who's Betsy again? Oh, you that's don't right. Know Betsy, but Dog. she's a big pup. Pitbull. <laughs> Real intimidating. I feel safe around her. First night goes without incident. I get some solitude. Betsy gets to pee wherever she wants. All good stuff. <sighs> Second day, I get the idea in my head that I can hike deeper in the woods. Probably against my better judgment, but hey, we're just having fun camping trip, right? So me and Betsy start marching in the morning. Did you find the Blair Witch? <laughs> it gets a little late when we set up camp. It's different this night, real quiet. Can't hear the birds, the crickets, squirrels, nothing. Dead silent. <sighs> Then it happens. I hear the most unholy growl I've ever heard in my life, right outside my tent. Me and Betsy, we go investigate. We look around the clearing, nobody's there. But there's this feeling, not sure if I can quite describe it. I know someone, something is watching us. Betsy, though, she's scared, never seen her like that. And when she's scared, I know that I should be too. And that's when I see it. In the distance. The Blair Toaster, according to the chat. <laughs> mm. 
a man, but a toaster. <laughs> it's a, <laughs> a it's toaster that with legs. Didn't know what a man was supposed to look like made it. It's just wrong. Big <laughs> arms too long for its body. Black eyes. It just stood there staring at me. A man, but if something that didn't know what a man was supposed to look like made it. <laughs> just wrong. <laughs> then it disappeared. I hear one yelp from Betsy and turn around to check on her, but she's gone into thin air. What? I didn't sleep at all in my tent that night, and I don't think I've slept right since. I don't know if I should call him out on his bullshit or if I should say, that's terrible. <laughs> uh, he usually, I think he's actually serious about this. I think this, I don't think he's pulling my leg with this one. I think he actually wants me to believe him. I think if you call him lying, he's going to double down. That's true. But if you say that's terrible, he's just going to continue. <laughs> that's the same thing. <laughs> Hold on just a sec. I want to turn off my cursor. Eh. Oh my goodness. Isn't there like some better way of doing this? <laughs> ah. mm -hmm. I thought there was a bigger way of doing this. Is it not? Oh, hide her. Hide. Oh, no. I don't remember what setting it's in. Well, no. Well, damn. Come on, OBS. No. I'm being really particular. And yeah, this is a weird thing to get caught up oh, in. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, cool. Ah, that's terrible, or you're lying. Uh. uh, uh terrible? That's terrible. Robert, oh. I'm so sorry. They say if you listen closely on quiet nights, nights just like tonight, you can hear the howl of the Dover ghost. Okay, but you just saw a man that was not shaped like a man. That doesn't mean it was a Dover ghost. A howl resonates through the woods. It doesn't sound like a regular howl. It's so guttural. Even from far away, something about it makes my skin crawl. Okay, real funny. What what neighbor did you get to go howl in the woods? <laughs> He's white as a sheet, though. You're, you're messing with me, right? I was messing with you up until literally just now. <laughs> I totally made that camping story Oh my up. god, I never believe anything you say from now on. I strain my eyes to scan the forest line, trying to see where the howl originated from. Off in the distance, I see something. It's so far away, I can barely make it out. It looks like a human, but it's, it's dragging something. Do you see that human dragging something? We should go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's get out of here. We slowly back away and enter the truck, turns off the headlights, we make a slow crawl away back into the road. I'm too scared to look back. The Dover ghost, I guess. I, uh, yeah, I guess. Or a murderer that's dragging its body <laughs> up the mountain. <laughs> it doesn't seem like he's messing with me this time. Or maybe someone illegally dumping garbage in a wildlife preserve. Maybe just that. Mm, yeah. That's the story we'll tell ourselves. <laughs> we sit in silence for a little while longer, the fear of whatever that was slowly subsiding as we get closer to the city. Thanks for coming out. This was fun. Oh, honey, I came out 25 years ago. <laughs> I'm sorry I haven't been in touch. I've just been in a way lately. I had to get out of the house. Have you been in some kind of way? <laughs> had to be around somebody. Oh, well, I'm glad you chose me. You, you doing okay, man? <laughs> he thinks for a second and lights another cigarette. I don't know. Oh. Hey. Been doing a lot of thinking. Takes a long drag. <gasps> As I get older, I feel more and more that I'm just drowning in a sea of regret. Oh. I was so busy chasing after these things that I thought would make me happy that I didn't think about anyone else. All I cared about was myself. I didn't even think. He stops. I wait for him to finish his thought, but he just stares at the road. 
No, I can't unpack all my trauma tonight. It's only the second date. <laughs> maybe I'm just built like this. Oh. Or maybe I do it to myself. Maybe it's my own choice that I'm as unhappy as I am. He really is just Gavin. <laughs> I try to think of something to say. I remember of all the times in my life when I've been sad, and there's a great many of them, but there was always a light at the end of the tunnel and something I held on to that kept me going. But there's something so resigned about the way Robert's talking. Maybe we deserve to be eaten by the Topher ghost. Uh, ooh, I feel like this one's important. Um... That sucks doesn't seem like the right <laughs> one. Uh, I don't think just that sucks is good. I'm glad you told me it was very tender, and this is, like, his sense of humor. But I don't want him to think that I'm, like, making light of him actually opening up to me for the first time. So I could say I'm glad you told me. I don't, I don't see how that could really backfire. That's kind of the safe option. Cool story, bro. Cool story, bro. Uh, I don't know. Chat. Glad you told me or Dover Ghost. When you've played this round, you know the answer, so you just sit and scream. <laughs> glad you told me. Glad you... That's what I was thinking. Because I think this... I think he could get offended by this, actually. And then this is obviously not right. So I'm, I'm thinking this is the most tender... It must have taken a lot for you to want to tell somebody like this. You're a mysterious guy, Robert, but you don't have to be. Let me in, let me in! Do you ever wish you were a better father? Duh. <laughs> all the time. You can read all the parenting books you want, but nothing will ever prepare you for raising a child. There's so much stuff I regret or wish I could have done better, but I don't have the answers. I don't know if anyone does. I mean, just today I made my daughter a pie and I forgot the recipe and I just winged it and it turned out terrible. I regret everything. I... It's funny. I look at you and your relationship with your daughter and it seems perfect. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> At least you're there for her. I stare out the window at the blur of passing trees. Robert, are you a dad? <laughs> You've never told me. I just hope I'm a better father to my kid than my dad was to me. Mm -hmm. What did your dad do? Oh no, I get to unpack my emotional trauma. Okay, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> it's more about what he didn't do. He was quiet and stoic. Don't think he ever once told me he loved me. He cared more about his work than he ever did about me or my mom. That's His name was Elijah Kamsky, and he was a dick. Oh, no. Do you hate him? Oh, well, no, I don't hate him. I used to, but after I became a parent, I just feel bad for him. He missed out on my whole childhood, so there. When I think about all the happiest moments in my life, they're all with Amanda and Alex, who's apparently my ex, and or dead, with ch like, husband who died, and he just wasn't there. It hurt like hell when I had to leave him to die in that Belarusian prison. <laughs> really? What? What, I got you now, huh? I turn and smile at him. No, he's retired in Florida. We go there every Christmas. It's very boring. He's not divorced yet. It's really a shame. Ah, oh, look at those eggplants. We break out into laughter and he pats me on the shoulder. We drive the rest of the way in silence, listening to the radio and watching the bright lights of the city grow bigger. Bright lights. He drops me off at my place, and I'm about to close the passenger drawer. I realize I still haven't given... I still have his pocket knife in my jacket. I pull it out and offer it back to him. You're pulling a knife on me! What? <laughs> okay, <I'm back. laughs> you hold on to that. You never know when you might need it. Ah, pulling knives on each other. It's gonna be our thing. <laughs> Night, Robert. Have a safe drive home to the next house over. <laughs> Robert smirks and pulls away. Ah, we don't kiss. He then immediately pulls into his driveway, which is one over from mine. He gets out and waves. It's dumb. <laughs> Godspeed. I tiptoe into the house, careful not to wake hey, Amanda up. driveway. <laughs> Whoa, where did you come from? <laughs> Maybe pulls out knife will be our always. Hmm. I look around and spot Amanda coming out of the kitchen with a glass of water. I thought you were sleeping. Oh, yeah, I 
was in spirit. Uh, mm, yeah. Robert woke me up to go cryptid hunting. Is that what they're calling it these days? Uh, <laughs> actually, we mostly just played with wood. <laughs> You know the Mothman's bullshit, right? No. No, no. Y you know what? Fine. Eh? I think about the conversation I had with Robert in the car as she starts walking towards her room. Hey, Amanda. Oh. She stops. I love you. Hmm. It's weird when you say it outright and sincerely like that, but I love you too. Night. What time is it? It's gotta be like 4.30 in the morning. I got thirsty. I ch okay, Actually, okay, I've been on, okay, Cindy Lou Who. I, I've been on on AIM. <laughs> on AIM. <laughs> this game's not that old. I chuckled to myself and finally decided to I've go been to bed. Chatting with dads on dad book using my fake profile. Hello, what? <laughs> 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 Gotta get that money. Oh my god. <laughs> I didn't get very many dad points. Oh, S. S rank. That's the best. Is it? Yes. Oh, cool. What? Why do I have such a high rating in crime? The child. I don't know what these bars mean or the whatever. He likes me. That's all that matters. He likes me. He really likes me. Rank is good. Rank S is good. Okay, cool. It's been a long day. It's 10 a.m. I was up all night, whittling. And I need you now. After a few bites of ice cream, I turn off the lights and walk down to the hall of my room. Wonder if Amanda's still awake. The kid needs sleep. As I pass her room, I can hear a faint sound, but can't quite make out what it is. I get a little closer. Oh God, is, is she crying? She cry? Well, I knock gently on the door. Amanda, are you crying? The crying stops. Not right now. Did you get rejected from another school? Her voice sounds strange. She sniffles. I need to make sure she's okay. I invade her privacy. I open the door. <laughs> Aw. In the dark, I can see Amanda's outline in the middle of her bed, knees hugged up against her body. Is this about that Noah guy that you told me you definitely weren't dating, but probably were dating, and he dumped you because he cheated on you with Emma P or Emma Q or whichever one isn't the arsonist? Is that what? Is that where we're going? <laughs> Is everything okay? I don't want to talk about it. Did something happen? No, nothing happened. Go away. Uh, uh, are you? Are you just? Are, are you? Yeah. Re are you really telling me that all of this is just because you watched Moulin Rouge? <laughs> something must have happened. Oh wait, no, I, that's not what I wanted to. Damn it! Ah! Went straight for it. Mm. I back out of the room and close the door gently behind me. She immediately starts crying again. Ah, eh, fuck. Oh, God damn it. I was meant to hit that. Ugh. I have no idea what has her so upset. She seemed normal. I feel awful just leaving her to cry, but I also get the feeling if I tried to do anything else, it would only have made her more upset. I can't stop mentally cycling through all the awful things she could be dealing with. More than anything, I just want her to be happy and safe. I have a hard time falling asleep, but when I finally do, I'm still thinking about Amanda. After a long night of very little sleep, I roll out of bed and make myself a pot of coffee. She should be up for school. Maybe she'll be more willing to talk about whatever was bothering her now. About ten minutes before she's supposed to leave, she comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. Morning, Amanda! <laughs> Morning. She drops a frozen waffle into the toaster, slams the freezer door. She won't look at me. Ugh. So, anything big going on at school today? Or last night? Or on AIM? <sighs> no. Okay. Do you need a ride to school that we can talk on? No. Want some coffee? She pulls the toaster lever up and takes her still freezer burn waffle out before it's finished cooking. Hey, Salamanilla, don't do that. I have to go. She picks up her bag and storms out. Oh. Okay. Um, does she not like that I am falling for a, 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 a skeevy, leather-clad, cryptid hunting... <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> is she having an affair with Robert? I mean, what's what's going on? What's happening? I haven't seen her act like this in a long time. It's usually short-lived, but it always hurts. Hopefully this blows over and things are back to normal soon. I sit back at the kitchen table and look at the picture of Amanda and I hanging on a wall. In it, I'm teaching her to ride a bike. 
Her mixed his face her face is a mixture of excitement and pure unadulterated fear. I remember how determined she was. Every time she would fall off and scrape her knees, she would get up and try it again. Finally, I had to stop her because she was just bleeding everywhere. Then she started to cry because she didn't think she needed bandages and wanted to keep trying. She's just made a muscle. She doesn't get it from me. <laughs> As I put the bike away, she stood in the middle of the street and screamed. I took her for ice cream and it was like nothing ever happened. That's what I do to reward my children. I take them for ice cream when they scream. After giving it a bit of thought, I decided that if I force her to talk about it, I'm only going to make things worse. But I have an idea. I start rummaging around for ingredients. Oh, here we go. I'm going to bake something again. It's going to be great. I hear Amanda walk in the door. Instead of heading for the kitchen, she makes a beeline to her room and she's avoiding me. Hey, pumpkin. I made you a pumpkin pie. What? Can you come here for a sec? No. You need to try this pie. No. Yes. I, you know, like, you're the only one. No. So you would tell me if it's good or not. No. It's a moment of silence. Yeah. I wanted to say sorry about last night. I'm just worried about you. I get scared when I know something's wrong, and more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it, and really scared when you won't tell me what's wrong, and so I don't know if it's just like, I don't know, hormones, or like, someone killed a man. I don't know. How am I supposed to know? That, I... So, so just, okay, whatever it is, and, and you don't have to tell me if you don't want to, what, whatever it is, you have a dad in your corner. Who, who wants you to be happy? Uh. Honey, you know I'm bad with words. I, I have 200,000 of them in the English language, but I can never string them together. So I was hoping I could speak a language we both understand. Cake. <laughs> Ta-da! Dad. It took me a re- <laughs> It took me a really long time. I ran out of red frosting somewhere around sad, and then I had to start over. Don't ask me why I decided to make this cake red. Huh. This is beautiful. <laughs> it's strawberry. She gives me a big old hug. I grab some plates and forks and serve us some delicious cake. God, now I want cake. So, it's really stupid. It's about that Noah guy and Emma P, isn't it? What? What is? Noah told me you hit on him at school the other it, day. No, that was not Noah. That was Lucian, and I didn't do nothing. This whole... Okay. This whole thing, I know I've been really weird lately, and there's just... I don't even know how to explain it. I feel like I might have to make you a chart. Okay. Uh, um, I'm listening. Do you want me to take notes? I guess I should start from the top. So you know how Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California, right? Yeah, Emma R. That's one of them. <laughs> the best friend. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah I know. I'm a great you. dad. I'm a great dad. <laughs> I'm wonderful. I'm a wonder. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, ever since she got into the got the acceptance letter, I've been feeling like she's drifting away. You know. Yeah. She's been spending a lot more time with Grace and Emma P, and uh -huh. I just thought that I was it was all in my head uh -huh. for a while. But then I found out Rosie. Who Ann the fuck is that? <laughs> That both the Emmas, Grace, and Noah all went to a party at Mackenzie F. Who the fuck is that? On the <laughs> same night, they all told me they were busy studying for Calc A B final. Those bastards! Yikes. Why are they in Calc A B if they're going to art school? So, another important piece of information is uh, God, this is embarrassing. I have a grid on Noah. Oh, and, you don't uh, say. Uh, that's a thing. What? You... A boy? <laughs> but... But you were a finger guns lesbian, I thought. I, finger I... guns bisexual. Oh, 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 <laughs> finger guns bisexual. Okay. Uh, well, uh, huh. 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 Okay. I... I had no idea. Oh, you're just like your dad, loving boys and... <laughs> I definitely didn't know that. Okay. You're a bad liar. I'm... So are you. I learned from the worst. Oh. Anyway, so the only person I told that I had a crush was MR, and she promised not to tell anyone uh -huh. I didn't confront them at the uh -huh. party because I didn't want to start drama, uh -huh. so I keep quiet, and I was going uh -huh. to do my business. She sighs. 
And then one day I uh-huh. invited everybody to go out for nachos. Oh, nachos. And, and not texting me back for like two hours. Oh, two whole hours. Even though none of them ever put their phones down for more than oh, 60 lame. seconds. They say that they're busy like simultaneously. Oh, those are, that, no, that, that's, that, that, that is super sus. So I tell them never mind as one word, just like Nirvana. I'll just eat nachos at home. You right? tell them. But we're out of chips and i really wanted nachos well you know so i went to the mall it's totally understandable so i go out to the mall anyway i get to the food court and who do i see there but grace emma p emma r and no all hanging out and eating nachos without me gasp what and it gets better i'm standing by the escalators and watch them and i realize that noah has his arm around mr which is kind of weird right oh yeah 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 i mean i thought she was a finger cunt lesbian too (laughs) But then they kiss. No. Yes, I know. It's a storm over there. And I'm like, hey. Oh, oh, oh. You you did? I storm over there. You did. And I say, hey. And Grace drops her nachos on her shirt because, of course, she does. And Emma R just, like, glares at me. Well, fuck that bitch. Great, 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 great. Who is Grace? I don't. Great, great. Grace is the. Clearly the boring one, because I don't remember shit about Grace. How about gossipy? She seems gossipy, right? Oh, yeah, 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 she is. She's so gossipy. Oh, well, yeah. Grace is one nobody really likes, but I guess that's me now. I guess I, I, that's, that's why I don't remember her. They replaced me with Grace, who nobody likes. But anyway, nobody will say anything, and I'm just like, you guys suck, which I realize is not the most eloquent thing to say, but I was angry, and I really embarrassed, and I just wanted to get no out of No one's there. a poet when they're emotional. So I left. Without nachos, might I add, oh, which damn only the nachos. further contributed to the shitty day, and I immediately drafted a super long text in the group chat asking them why I've been so, why they've been so weird to me. And- wait, wait, wait. Stop right there. What's a group chat? And I wrote one, another one to MR asking how long Noah had been going on. Sorry, I know that's a lot of you I'm, still oh, following. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I have no idea what's happening. What did she say? Oh, okay. Get a load of this. MR says, you know what? Let me just read it to you. Oh, okay, okay. You get that. You get that phone right out, and you you read you read this shit to me. I want the tea. Okay. Amanda pulls out. She reads word for word an artistly long string of text hmm. messages. Can you believe that? No! I cannot believe that! I care so much about Amanda's social life and mental well-being, but man, do I not understand what she is talking about. This is beyond me. Ah, the straights. This is, <laughs> I'm trying my hardest to be supportive. These these Emmas and these, these Noahs and these children. My bisexual daughter is too good for all of you. Oh, no. Oh, no. They were dating in secret for like months. So I told her that it's, that she's being really terrible friend. And she's like, well, if you think I'm so terrible, just stop being my friend. And I was like, okay. And then she left me on red. What does that mean? And then. Wait, 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 left me on red. What is that? (laughs) Oh, like she saw my message and didn't reply. You know, like all of the the guy, the the, the dads do on your dad book. Oh yeah. Uh, Wait, that's what they've been doing to me. (laughs) I don't know what red receipts are, but I'm going to nod and pretend I understand. Oh, yes, yes. So while uh, all this is happening, I'm talking to Emma P. about how mad I am because at least she's being kind of reasonable. And oh, I'm no, that was a bad choice, honey. That I was a bad choice. Stuff. You can't trust her. <gasps> and then out of nowhere, Noah texts me like, how could you say that about me? And I'm like, say why about you? And he tells me Emma P. sent screenshots of everything, and I told her the group chat that i got kicked out of you lost me at screenshots but that sounds bad (sighs) there's so much more but honestly it's all really stupid teenager stuff oh yeah maybe the bottom line is everybody dropped me half my grade hates me and now i have no friends oh you uh you have that nine-year-old next door who you were playing paranormal ice road truckers with i'm sure she's your friend Amanda, I'm so sorry, but you're going to go off to college and none of this matters. <laughs> I almost expect it from everybody else, Aww. but Emma R's been there since Dad died, and I can't believe she would just stab me in the back like that with a proverbial knife. 
not a real knife. I I know a guy you can get a real knife. Uh, I wish I at least had a knife made of wood. <laughs> I'm not even that mad that she's dating Noah, but I'm upset that she lied to me about it for so long. She stabs at the cake. Okay, I take it back. I'm kind of mad she's dating Noah. Like... What did I do wrong? Why does everybody just suddenly decide I'm not cool anymore? Well, they don't like the new kid. That's always what happens. I'm not new in town. <laughs> and as <laughs> mad as I am at everybody, like, I miss them, Dad. She looks so dejected, I almost can't take it. What could I possibly say to oh, help? No. Anyways, that's it. The whole sword... Dale, thank you for listening. Tune in next week for more hot gossip. You are 30 minutes late for school. Wow. I know, it's pretty dumb. And this is after school. It's not dumb. You have feelings. That's fine. <laughs> no, it's a stupid thing to be upset over. Manda, your feelings are real. Don't ever be mad at yourself for having feelings. They, they, they had to work a long time on me to get me to have feelings, okay? So they put a lot of money and a lot of time and energy getting me to have feelings. So don't take them for granted. I guess. Unless you've secretly been a robot who's been approximating human feelings this whole time. <laughs> that would be a thing. That would, that would be a thing, wouldn't it? That would be, that would, I don't know where that came from. Uh, yeah. Dad, if I was a robot, I wouldn't have transformed into a monster truck a long time ago. Why didn't I think of that? It's... But seriously, I know you probably don't want advice, but I feel like it's my duty as dad to bestow upon you a few nuggets of fatherly wisdom. Nuggets. First of all, first of all, we can't turn into monster trucks. We're not transformers. That's not a thing. That's a stereotype. Don't repeat that. Nugget. Second of all... Real friends don't actually not all friendships last forever is the real is the real advice but honestly that the, the that's right not what she wants to hear real friends don't do that you need real friends street smarts <laughs> when you get older you start realizing that the sort of people you want to associate yourself with do you really want to surround yourself with people who would do something like that to their friend? It takes a lot of work to find and maintain meaningful friendships. It took me a long time to figure that out myself, and I wish I had learned it sooner. So that's Dad, why I you... have no friends, because none of them are good enough for me. <laughs> if the other person, that's my problem. If the other person isn't putting in the effort, it's not worth it. You're not beholden to being their friend. They don't, they, they, they don't measure up. They don't get in the nines bubble. Ultimately, I think this says way more about their character than it does about yours because you're amazing, and if they can't see that, well, that's their problem. Fuck them. I'll keep that in mind. You do that. I look down at the table. D did, did we just eat this whole cake? I'm still hungry. Yes. I really want cake now. <laughs> I really want pie or cake. Is there a place we can get cake at 10 p.m.? <laughs> no. Good talk. She gets up to go to her room. Before she closes her door, she turns around. A pops. Yes. Thanks. You are always welcome. I love you too, Dad. Aw. And also with you. <laughs> with your spirit. <laughs> go ask your mother. All right. Time for the third date with, uh, with our soulmate here. All right. You know what they say about third dates. They get pretty serious. You might not have had time to browse dad book for a while. Are you ready? Well, just a sec then. I want to actually go back. See if I... Oh, what's it been in the group chat? Are you up to anything tonight? Go away, Hugo. Oh, what? I'm leaving them on red. What does Craig want? Hello, Amanda's dad. Oh, fuck you, Craig. We know each other from college. That can't be... That can't actually be Craig, could it? That can't be Craig. That's a robot impersonating Craig. Like, that's got to be Craig's kid or something, right? Yes. Or Amanda hacked into Craig's account. But his kid is a baby. Yeah. Do they make iPhones for babies? Maybe it's his... <laughs> no, he lost his wife. That's right. I haven't spoken to Robert since... I mean, in theory, most of them are single. <laughs> it's, a, it's a dating sim. Not all of them. Not, not Joseph. I haven't spoken to Robert since the night we drove out to his thinking spot. He seemed unusually somber then. Like, more so than the usual amount of somber that he is, which is already a lot. 
I've been thinking about him and I hope he's okay, but I've been a little reluctant to reach out to him because he's just so cool and I'm so not. Nines. Hey, nines. Guess who's getting their drink on tonight? Hopefully just you and not Mary. Yes, it's you. It's also me, but mostly you. Right now? It's, it's noon. <laughs> yeah! Robert, buddy, tonight we ride. Yes! Meet you at Jim and Kim's at 8. Not that I'm unappreciative, but I think this is the first time that Robert's given me more than an hour's warning before hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> I miss the excitement. Amanda! Amanda pops her head to the hallway. Music I don't recognize blaring from a room. Is that Nicki Minaj? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Sorry, I, I was just... What's a Nicki Minaj? <laughs> I'm hanging out with Robert tonight. Hanging out. Hanging out. <laughs> okay, cool. Ro Ro Robert, who is my friend. I have friends. That's nice, Dad. I wish I did. You know how I was talking about how my standards are like up to here for people I associate with and let into my friend circle? He definitely passes that bar. <laughs> Dad gets friends and I don't. I'm the worst. I'm so lame. If my dad can have friends, but I can't have people friends. People. I must be super lame. Enjoy my company, Amanda. Dad, I am happy for you for your continued development as a human being. Oh, I don't think this this is an incline in association with this guy. What are you listening to? Sad shit. Oh, so it's not Nicki Minaj. It's My Chemical Romance. I got it. Uh, it's, 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 uh, Eilish. Oh, yes, Billie Eilish. That's what all the sad kids are listening to these days. All the sad kids. <laughs> <laughs> All my sad homies listen to Billie Eilish. Oh. <laughs> what would what would grandma think? I don't give a fuck anymore. <laughs> That's probably the name of one of her songs. Amanda? Let <sighs> You know what? You're an adult now. I gave it an earnest effort for all 18 years. Go forth and swear. I had a roommate who was promised a thousand dollars if he didn't swear until he was twenty-one. Uh, I I would have cleared that bar. Unfortunately, when my mom started watching my Twitch streams, I really just gave up. <laughs> I, you know, for he for, wasn't for... allowed to have, um, he wasn't allowed to drink. Oh my god. Uh, swear, well, until twenty one, yeah. Or have sex. I would have cleared two out of the three of those. <laughs> I'm gonna let y'all guess which one. <laughs> um. So. <laughs> But no, like, I, I made a really earnest effort until I was, like, I guess 27 to never swear in front of my mother. But then she started coming to my Twitch streams, and I, I'm i not censoring myself for her. I mean, he, <laughs> so he wasn't allowed to swear outside of the company. The, 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 the cat's out of the bag, you know, I, like, uh. She just deals with it now. I still actually do make an earnest effort to still never swear around her in person, but sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> I hardly ever swear. Ar around, like, most people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> okay. I really hope I don't regret this later. Amanda goes back to her room and turns up the volume to her sad shit. <laughs> Stream elements would like you to know that you can get emotes <laughs> to express your feelings. <laughs> I put on my going out coat, walk to Jim and Kim's. I spot Robert leaning against a brick wall, smoking a cigarette. As I get closer, I realize he looks a little different. Cleaner, I guess. It actually seems like he combed his hair and his clothes are less wrinkled than usual. Oh, he's putting in effort. Hey. Are we, are we not friend zoned anymore? Is this an actual date now? You take a shower just for me? I'm working on my relationship with existence. Oh, well, that's growth. We <laughs> both stand there for a second and don't say anything. Robert finishes a cigarette and abruptly goes inside and I follow him. By the time I get inside, he's already at the bar ordering two whiskeys. I spot a booth in the back and claim it for us. Robert slides in and hands me a glass. Are we gonna play Never Have I Ever? Is Neil here? Neil! Neil, look at us! We're on another date! I know you ship it. 
To us. Ooh, to, to toast. <laughs> to us. Here's to us, and all the property damage and petty larceny that we may commit tonight. We clink whiskeys and I watch him sip his rather, his, rather his traditional approach of slamming the whiskey back as quick as possible. So what's the plan for tonight? Hit some bars, maybe grab some pizza. I think I'll kill some time before we go burn down the old abandoned house in the woods. I love bars and pizza and fire arson. It's definitely not as fun as if it's abandoned. Ugh. Mary pops over the back of the booth, a glass of wine in her hand. She punches Robert in the shoulder. Where is my phone call? Sorry, I figured you were busy sinking your teeth into some poor sap. She a vampire? Is that is that is, is she a vampire? She looks like a vampire. Her eyes are red. I am. He's right here. I look around the booth to see a guy sitting across from her, and he waves meekly. You replacing me with this new kid? Mary, I could never replace you, whether I wanted to or not. She leaves her booth and slides in next to Robert. God damn it. The guy she was sitting in looks mildly relieved. She eyes Robert's clean press clothes up and down suspiciously. What, do you got a court date coming up? S should I, should I maybe like, is she the Tina? Is she, I don't know, if she was going after women, I would feel a lot less threatened. <laughs> he never convinced the jury. He, he does, he looks handsome. Should I be earnest? Should I be earnest? He'd never could be... Hmm. I mean, I should... I, I should just go for it. He's handsome. He's handsome! I think he cleans up nice. Oh. Oh, you were supposed to say he does. Oh, God. Uh, pump the brakes, kid. I blush a little. Seriously, though, what's up with you? Robert stares down at his drink, suddenly looking serious. It's happy. Doctor says it's cirrhosis of the liver. I told that old bag of bones to quit it with the sauce, but it's all he's ever known, especially since Ma's gone. That's why I invited you out tonight. I just didn't want to be alone. Oh, come on. Uh... Nine, stop being an asshole. You know the one thing Robert doesn't joke about <laughs> around is his pappy. Oops. They're giving him two months. I gotta... Help straighten out his affairs. R Rob, Robert, I'm so sorry. He takes a long look at his whiskey, eyeing it at the dim glow of the bar's lights. I look at his life, and I look at mine, and I know history is just doomed to repeat itself. Oh my god. I'm just kidding. He's retired with his uh, girlfriend. I knew it! And I knew it! Coco. You can't, you can't get over me. They watch the sunset every night. Probably screw like donkeys. I, wait, wait, what, aren't rabbits the one who screw a lot? Oh, sorry, I didn't realize you were an expert on which animals screw a lot. Well, I am! I have a database of all the animals that screw. Please stop saying the word screw. Robert finishes his drink and slides it away from him. He gets up out of the booth. Me and Nines are gonna- oh. <laughs> Me and Nines are gonna hit the bricks. What's that mean? <laughs> you coming with? Mary casts one last glance at the sad sap she's been hunting down and the rest downs the rest of a wine in one gulp. Ah. This place is dead anyways. Neil from the back. Oh, fuck you! <laughs> we exit the bar and find the typically empty street filled with a small crowd of people. At the front is a guy with a really deliberate attitude and bad posture. He carries a lantern that he shines up at his face for dramatic effect. What is it, Halloween? What's what's happening? Look like it's one of those walking ghost tours. They do that in this part of the town all the time. Is this Charleston? <laughs> I don't know where we are. <laughs> I've always wanted to do one of those. You know, all the stories are fake, right? Ugh. Pretty much all of my stories are fake. This is research. Mm. Robert makes a beeline towards the back of the group. He turns around when he notices I'm not following him. Come on. We, we can't just crash it, can we? These, these tours cost $15. Don't be such a square nines. Just act like you belong. <laughs> okay. Robert slides up to the tour group. Like I, re I reluctantly fall into step behind him. Well, here goes nothing. I am a person who belongs. 
Hey, hey, it was in this place in 1694 that the most infamous witch trials were held. Oh, what are we in Salem, Massachusetts? Where are we? <laughs> To date, we do not know if the people burned at stake were actually witches, but it's widely reported that their ghosts still haunt this hapless dive bar to this very day. It was actually 19, 1692. What? And the site was over by the coffee shop down the road. I, I'm sorry, who are you? Daniel McSturgis, ghost historian. And this is my colleague, Doctor. Nines hundreds. 80s reference, 90 members, contemporary reference, 2000 reference. <gasps> 80s reference? How old are you, Robert? <laughs> Gavin would be Gen Z. Oh my god, thousands aren't contemporary. Right? <laughs> I think 80s, but what do you got? 80? Everybody says 80. 80s. Dr. Loomis, paranormal investigator. Hey, it's Dr. Loomis! We're touring America's most haunted locations as research for our new book. Do you think it's a ghost reference or, or is it's it a It's a Halloween, Halloween reference. reference. You may have been our guest cameo on Paranormal House Hunters Extreme Edition. Technically, that's a 70s reference, but I'll let it slide. A couple of people in the group start nodding. Man, Robert is so good at being a fucking liar. It's so hot. Oh, are you guys part of the group? I don't remember seeing you at the first stop. We like to keep a low profile. Easier to catch ghosts that way. Hey. They've definitely been here. Been standing next to him the whole time. I'm drunk. <laughs> Thank you, random lady who I do not know. As I was saying, the epicenter of paranormal activity can be found at the coffee spoon over there. Oh, oh no, I gotta tell Matt. <laughs> the man who runs there it has been plagued by hauntings since he signed the lease. Damn near driven him mad. I really hope that's Matt's storyline, is that you just help him vanquish the ghosts in his coffee shop during every date. <laughs> but whatever you want to say is cool, I guess. It's your tour. Man, didn't know that about Matt. <laughs> wait, 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 that's right. Robert's, Robert's making this up. The rest of the tour group listens intently to Robert's every word. I think the tour guy can tell he's losing the group. He seems to be getting flustered. Thank you for your contribution contribution and knowledge, Mr. McSturgis. Let's move on to the next haunted location. Disco Stew is hunting ghosts. <laughs> Robert, Mary, and I follow the group down the street. That tour guide's shirt is cool. <laughs> yeah, everyone in the group gets one if we make it to the final destination. Final location. Not the final destination. That's death. I turn to Robert and grab him by the shoulders. I need that t-shirt, Robert. You gotta win it for me. Well, I guess we're in that tour for the long haul. Just follow my lead, don't arouse too much suspicion, and we'll have a cool ghost shirt in no time. Hey. hey. Our group arrives at an old, decrepit, colonial-style house. <laughs> a quick pause in the tour. My name's Quinn, but most people on the ghost circuit call me Disco Quinn. <laughs> I'm a DJ, trivia master, part-time actor, Look me up on IMDB. I do private ghost hunting events, birthday parties, MC bar mitzvahs, perform traditional vaudevillian mime work. Tour Master Quinn gives out headshots to all of us. His resume is on the back. Y'all joke, but that shit's real. <laughs> huh, stage combat experience. <laughs> anyway, here's a little bit of history for all y'all. This was the home of noted American author Dorothy Pembridge, whose prose was wildly popular in the late 19th century. It was in the attic of this very home where she wrote such classics such as the diaries of Victorian mistress, Lady Fitzwillems, courtship, and the ghost of sea captain Reginald Barkley. She unfortunately died of consumption shortly after the turn of the century, but several people have reported that on nights you could still see a light from the attic where the ghost of Miss Pembridge continues work on her latest bestseller. She was eaten by a cannibal? I guess you could say she was consumed by her work. My feelings hurt. Sad Master Quinn. Oh, no reaction from the crowd. This guy needs to work on his dad jokes. He's probably not even a dad. Actually, consumption was. Oh my god, Robert. <laughs> Little known fact was that she was. Uh, it was a murder suicide. Ah, I'm pretty sure she died of consumption. Sure, sure. And we uh, definitely didn't hire Stanley Kubrick to elaborately fake the moon landing. Why would you. Pay all that money for Stanley Kubrick. I feel like you could probably get, Did you like... you 2001 Space Odyssey? Yeah, Very convincing. Yeah, fair. 
That's the watered down censored version they teach you in the school. But if you can't handle the real story, I understand. It's not for the faint of heart. Can we? I think everyone would much rather hear what this world renowned ghost historian has to see. Right, everybody? Group murmurs in agreement. I mean, I'm not going to check on my cell phone. <laughs> This is a topic we cover extensively in our book, Dr. Loomis. Would you care to tell the story? Um, um... Highbrow, knowledge, improv comedy skills. Heh. <laughs> mm, that's boring. I could probably riff something highbrow. I think, I think Robert would appreciate that. I don't think Robert likes improv comedy. Ah, yes. Though it's rarely covered in traditional textbooks, Dorothy Pembridge was caught in a fierce rivalry with le fellow local author, Arthur Livingston Price. Author's books were blatant rip-offs of her work and consistently sold better because sexism. Pembridge was enraged by this and confronted Livingston Price at his home with plans to end his life. Their bitter feud surprisingly blossomed into a torrid, passionate affair. Enemies to lovers, anybody? After many months of secret courtship, she followed through with her original plan and then poisoned him in his sleep. Enemies to lovers to enemies again. Overcome with unexpected grief, she polished off the last of the poison and died by her lover's side. Enemies to lovers to enemies to both dead. Reports say that couples who enter this house will no doubt doom their relationship to a bitter end. Man. I should bring my wife here. You what? <laughs> the entire tour group laughs. I'm kidding. My wife is dead. Oh, gasp. She was killed by a ghost. Oh, well, she probably is a ghost now, so she probably can get revenge. The crowd gasps again. I'm just messing with you guys. Huh, it's an inception lie. It's a lie within a lie, so they don't get suspicious of the first one. The tour guide sees this as an opportunity to take back the group and address us with some razzle-dazzle. Ah, what an interesting story! Ugh. Now, I just want everyone to know that the next location is extremely terrifying. If anyone thinks they can handle it, feel free to excuse yourselves. Hmm. Alright, I'm bored. She turns to a young guy looking at his phone and taps him on the shoulder. Hey kid, fancy buying a gala drink out in the middle of this street? <laughs> guy looks up at her and smiles. Only if the bar is haunted. Honey, I can show you the most haunted place in town. My vagina. Ah, uh, it is quite a haunt. <laughs> I think I think I can exercise your demons if that's what you're looking for. Don't write checks your dick can't cash, kid. His eyes go wide. Mary salutes me and Robert. She suddenly pulls in, me into a hug and murmurs into my ear. When you've known Rob for as long as I have, you know when something's wrong. Keep an eye on him for me tonight, okay? Uh, okay, sure, Mary. Good man. She pats me on the back and pulls away. She takes the guy's hand and leads him down the street, probably to an alley, to show him her haunt. <laughs> Take it sleazy, fellas. God help that poor soul. I don't know. Maybe Ted Danson will. Mary or the kid? <laughs> Both. One last stop! The cemetery! It's such a hotbed of horrifying paranormal activity, I'm not even sure where to begin. Look at all these dead people! <laughs> dead people for days! There's the Wailing Ghost of the Wharfman, the Vampire of Maple Bay, Children of the Moonlight. Vampire of Maple Bay is probably a guy you can date in this game, but we're not going to tell you that yet. What about the Dover Ghost? That shit ain't real, but Mothman is. By this point, the tour guide is clearly irritated with us. So what about it? Oh, nothing. I was just thinking it would be a crime to come all the way out to the cemetery, the actual origin of one of New England's friends. Ah, England. New England! <laughs> <laughs> Most notorious paranormal entities, and not mention the infamous Dover ghost. That's not a real thing. That's absolutely not a real thing. I think someone needs to brush up on their paranormal history. I know tons about paranormal history. I know every ghost story in this area. So can guarantee there's one you don't know. Robert looks over at me and smiles. Would you folks care to hear the story oh, okay. of how Loomis and I met? Oh, where are you going with this, hon? <laughs> no. No. The entire group shushes the tour guide. Okay, fine, fine. Tell a story. Well, it was dark and stormy night. I 
wasn't always a paranormal investigator. <laughs> I was I, I was an archer until I took an arrow to the knee. An archer? I don't remember. You took an the... arrow into the knee as an archer. <laughs> yes. Self-inflicted wound. It was a terrible arching accident. Way back when, when I was just a carnival barker. Bible salesman. Oh, I was a Bible salesman, and then this man showed me God. <laughs> I think I'm a convincing Bible salesman. <laughs> Traveling around this state, not only spreading the good word, but becoming closer to the man upstairs myself. I happened upon the quiet town of Maple Bay quite by accident, but little did I know that this city had a dark side. I was just walking along, minding my own business, and suddenly the chupacabra came out, and I saw the light. <laughs> Now, about the same time, I was just uh, starting out as an apprentice to a rather famous ghost hunter who was an old family friend of mine. I carried their equipment, operated the EVP machine, all that. Wait. Huh. Yes? What, what famous ghost hunter? Well, I don't like to name drop, but... Georgia Mathers. The tour group gasps. Hey. Georgia Mathers? She's a legend. You know her? Newer. Amazing woman. Died mysteriously. Missy Georgie. Oh. Anyway, we were in Maple Bay investigating some reports of strange lights and sounds coming from a cemetery late at night. Now, we had been warned by the old crypt keeper that this place was highly dangerous, but Georgie was uh, never one to shy away from an adventure. <clears throat> we can't... <laughs> that voice out in the center of the cemetery for three nights straight. We endured your so-called wailing watchman. Wailing ghost of the wharfman. Mm, whatever. Your stupid vampire is just a teenager in a mask. But the over ghost man, tell him, Loomis. <laughs> As Jay Sturkhart says, Hello, my name is Elder Nines, and I would like to share with you the most important book. <laughs> I was just walking back to my hotel after a long day of... Selling Bibles. <laughs> Gotta keep up the story. <laughs> Gotta keep up the story. Selling Bibles. Saving souls and selling Bibles. Also saving a couple Bibles. But never selling souls. Except my own. But that's another story. I lead over to the tour master Quinn. Won it back in a fiddle competition though. I found myself walking past this very cemetery. Now, I was never a very superstitious man. I mean, I was a Bible salesman and all, but still. But something seemed off. <laughs> I could hear some very... Some, some, some sort of something happening deep into the graveyard, and I felt compelled to investigate. Mm -hmm. And thank God you did. Georgia and I were conducting a seance in the mausoleum. At first, things were pretty normal. But then, about an hour, everything went south. Playing back the EVP meter, we were able to hear a single word. Rosebud! Really? Oh. Run. Oh, yeah, I guess. Meow, meow, meow. The air was sudden. suddenly went cold. Something was very, very wrong. I just knew we weren't alone. We suddenly hear this faint, distant scraping noise like something being dragged across the ground. It got louder, louder until it was deafening. Some kind of demented howl. And then I felt it. Someone, something, grabbing my ankle. Robert has the whole crowd hook, line, and sinker. You could hear a pin drop. I've only cried twice in my life. Once was at the birth of my daughter. Oh, uh, you're what? <laughs> the other was when that thing started dragging me. Wait, Robert, what? I, what? <laughs> I wasn't sure where it was taking me, but I knew it was no place I wanted to go. I was sure I was going to die. The moment... Wait, can we... We're going to circle back to that one part later, but... All right, I'll keep up the ruse. The moment I crossed the gate into the cemetery, I heard this god-awful screeching. I ran to the mausoleum. You know they call a gate into the cemetery? They call it a lich. You should call it a lich. Oh, well, I'm not a cemetery master. I'm a Bible salesman. How am I supposed to know? God, to this day, the mere thought of it ties my stomach into knots. It looked like a man, but like... I glance at Robert. Somebody who didn't know what a man looked like. Like someone who didn't know what a man was supposed to look like tried to put one together. The arms were too long. <laughs> it was too tall and his arms were too long. His eyes glowed red like it was a walking shadow. What I do, what any good person would do, I lunge for... Shoot, what was his fake name again? Daniel McSturgis, I believe. 
I think it was Daniel, right? Daniel? His Daniel? Th his name is Daniel. Da Daniel! Da Daniel! I grabbed his hand and entered into a tug of war with the unholiest of horses. I thought I was... Oh. You're, that's you. <laughs> I thought I was going to be torn in half. But I had God on my side. <laughs> the pocket and this knife. <laughs> the pocket Bible. And this I, knife I found. I always kept out on me fell out of my shirt pocket. And to this day, I can't remember what passage it opened up to. How about Austin 316? <laughs> that is not a book. Revelations. Revelations? Leviticus just tells you not to eat pork after 5 p.m. on Thursdays. I don't think that's relevant. Revelations is probably probably good. 12-7? E e Ecclesiades? Ecle Ecclesi Ecclesi How do you... Come on, Catholic. Help me out here. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. Okay. Well, I don't, I don't it's know. It's a book. It's a book. I don't know what these passages are. Everybody's saying 12-7, though. Then shall the dust return... Oh, that's you again. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. I have no idea where Robert pulled that verse from. The Bible. With a horrifying growl, the entity finally relented. Daniel and I collapsed into the ground exhausted. We were both covered in blood. I also love how apparently the chat knows the Bible offhand. They, they know the game. I never did. <laughs> That damn creature clawed into my chest. Got me real good. Had to get 16 stitches. Robert pulls down the collar of his shirt to reveal a long, wicked scar across his pecs. Mm. And that's how I got this scar. Okay, but how did you really get that yeah. scar? I, you need to tell me this later. I followed Georgia Mathers in to the ends of this earth. We faced exorcisms, demons, poltergeists that threw our equipment across the room, but I had never seen Georgia so scared. She was never the same after that, and neither was I. Watching what happened to Daniel and Georgia shook my faith, but I came out of that experience a better man and a better friend, and now worshiping the Chupacabra. And we've become brothers. Uh, but, uh, mm, brothers? Mm, Ever since. Bro mm, but, but that's not... No. Uh, mm, yes. Yes. Brothers, the tour group gives us a round of applause as Daniel or Robert and I share an emotional hug, and a kiss. like brothers do. As he embraces me, I can smell the cologne and say, "Wow, he really smells good." <laughs> I find myself lingering a little too long in the hug for somebody who's supposed to be his brother. The tour guide seems to have bought it. Even he's wiping a tear from his eyes. Thank you, thank you. It's an honor. Be sure to watch out for our book. I saw a demon. The shocking true story of seeing a demon. <laughs> Bro's guide to the hottest... No, I saw a demon. The shocking true story of seeing a demon. <laughs> Robert has to suppress a laugh at that one. Well, I think you both definitely earned your t-shirts. Here you go. Fuck off. Food. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> the dark guide hands us the coveted t-shirts and slips us both his business card and leans in close. If you guys are ever in need of a professional actor, a balloon animal artist, help us impersonate our nude model. Please don't hesitate. Contact me. Goodbye. You got it, buddy. After a couple of tours, take selfies with us. We split from the group and walk home. Oh, I'm going to see these on dad book later. They're not going to know what to tag me as. That was incredible. But about the brothers thing. <laughs> I can't believe that they bought we were brothers. <laughs> I really can't believe that they bought all of that. I didn't know that you had it in you. Nines, excuse me, Dr. Loomis. That bit about the pocket Bible was aces, although... Giving the Dover ghost glowing red eyes was a little cliche. And the Kubrick conspiracy theory wasn't? I... All a part of the character. Well, we got the shirts out of it, so let's get out of these. We arrive in front of Robert's house. Oh, Want to have a drink? Oh, yes. Is that even a question? Robert, how long have you known me for? Do you really think I would turn down the opportunity to share a fine alcoholic beverage with my treasured friend and accomplice, Mr. Robert Bobbert Small, in his house for the first time on a third date? If you ever call me Bobbert again, I will kick you right in the shins, both of them. And I'll thank you. <laughs> then you can expect an angry phone call from my orthopedist, Bobbert. <laughs> Robert just laughs and starts open unlocking the door. My shins live to see to li live to die another day. I... 
Oh, wow, you're messy. Scott. He leads me inside. I can't help but think about what Mary said to me. He did seem a little bit off, but that completely disappeared when we were joking around with the ghost tour. <laughs> Look, a distraction. <laughs> I don't know. He's hard to read. While I'm thinking, I hear claws skittering across the floor. Oh, God, it's his pit bull. I'm about to be torn to shreds. It's not a pit bull. I shut my eyes tight and brace for impact. Betsy, hey, be nice. I don't feel anything but tiny paws at my shoes. I open my eyes. Oh my god, is that a French bulldog? Betsy? Oh my god. <laughs> Robert's dog jumps away from me, running in circles and sniffing his legs. He pats her on the head. Hey, that's not a pit bull. This is the cutest, dumbest Boston Terry I've ever seen. Betsy, you're not a pit bull, and you weren't taken by the Dover ghost. God, Robert, why are you always full of shit? He did tell me that story was bullshit. I just forgot. Betsy's made of tougher stuff than that, ain't you, girl? Betsy rolls over for some well-deserved belly rubs. I just keep a picture of a large pit bull in my wallet in case of emergencies, comedic emergencies. Oh, it's like that beware of dog sign that you put out your house, but you carry it with you at all times? We make our way to his living room. For a quiet man with arguably the oldest pickup truck that can be legally driven, his place is amazing. There's sleek, modern appliances with a big flat screen TV and clothes and bullshit everywhere. I'm really looking past. The, look at these boomerangs. These are, look, We've culture. We've got boomerangs hanging on our wall, We too. do. He has shelves upon shelves of DVDs. Guess I was, he wasn't lying about being really into cinema. He pours us both glasses of whiskey from a well-stocked bar in the corner while Betsy curls up on a pile of cushions. So, how did you get that scar, really? And don't tell me you got it fishing for Alaskan king crabs in the Bering Sea or something. You've trained me too well. He laughs and takes a sip of his drink. Mm -hmm. My daughter and I were riding our bikes. I hit a rock, flew over the handlebars, and then we went to the hospital. And that's it. I love the headcanon is that he never had a daughter. He just moves his dog around in a stroller. <laughs> Not very interesting story. I've never heard you talk about your daughter that you apparently have. Well, I have one. Oh, well, okay. Oh, that's her. He points at a picture on the wall of a very serious little girl with dark eyes. Yep, that's definitely Robert's daughter. <laughs> How old is she? Uh... 25, oh 26. my god she's she's not too she's sure. a big daughter <laughs> does, does she does she live around here uh -huh. and i thought i was old for mine being 18. <laughs> no val lives back here back home in brooklyn val huh yep works at some new media online magazine thing makes buckets though uh. he suddenly seems really serious i probably shouldn't press him about it he likes Santana. Oh, do I? It's the sexiest music in the world. Yes. Ah. Great. He puts on Santana and takes a seat on the couch next to me. He suddenly downs his drink in one gulp. Gulp. Oh, I love the Santana in the background. The, disc the, the discount not really Santana. Hey, are you all right? He leans in and kisses me, the taste of whiskey burning my lips. I'm surprised at first, but slowly relax into his arms. He pulls away slightly, his lips barely brushing against my mouth. And then we made out to Santana. <laughs> like two men born in 1975. <laughs> Finally, yes! <laughs> they kiss. Oh. I am now. Oh, well, you keep doing that. I can't say anything at best managing a sigh. I really thought I was bud zoned there for a bit. I'm glad you made the first move. He leans in again, kissing me harder. He pulls my bottom lip between his, my te his teeth and bites lightly, sliding a hand under my shirt. My heart pounds in my chest as he lies us both on the couch and kisses a trail down my neck, his teeth grazing my skin. Oh, this is spicy. I, I just wait. <laughs> it's, it's not that. Your mouth is great. <laughs> he bites down and I have to stifle a moan. Does uh, stop. He stiffens up and pulls away. No biting. Oh, and that's not the problem. No, no, that I'm more than okay with the biting. And something's up. <laughs> he runs a hand through his hair and looks away. I'm fine. I've just been kind of stressed out, tired. Not a big deal. 
push it. Push, push it. it real good? <laughs> I think I'm gonna push it real good. Listen. I want this as badly as you do, but I know something's wrong. The reason I didn't sleep with you that first night is because I knew I had to unpack all of your emotional trauma before I did so. And we're gonna do that tonight. I need to make sure that you're okay. And then you can get this dick. <laughs> he stares at the crown. You don't know me that well, Nines. You're not a good... I'm not a good person. No, I'm aware. He takes a deep breath. Spent my whole life only taking and taking and taking, and now here I am, an old, broken man sitting on top of a pile of everything I've taken, alone. You're not that old. But I want to know you. You don't have to keep hiding behind fake stories and acting like you don't have feelings. I don't know. It's... He sighs heavily. <sighs> it's Val. She's visiting tomorrow. She wants to patch things up. Are, are you, uh, I'm sorry, but is this a bit? No. When was the last time you saw her? Three, four, I think. Months? That's how old she was. Oh, God. <laughs> Years. I sit up straight. Jesus, Robert, what happened between you two? It's almost as if she's an adult in her 20s and doesn't come home for Christmas regularly. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Robert and I sit in silence, neither of us wanting to look at each other, both of us unsure about what to do next. Maybe we should just keep making out. Oh. Fine. Hmm. Things were already bad between us. I cared about her. I always did. Things just got in the way, and before I knew it, she was leaving for college, wanting nothing to do with me. Marilyn and I moved out to settle down. We thought it would help to get away from all the distractions, all the money, the drinking. Marilyn? But temptation gets to you. I tried to be better, but I just couldn't. And then the accident changed everything. I think every day about how she must have died hating me. I never became better man that she wanted me to be, and... The one she always saw in me. Oh, so you're also McCready. Great. <laughs> she was the last thread Val and I had connecting us together. I I know that when I lost my wife, I was going to lose my daughter too. Ro Robert. I spent so much time chasing after things I thought were going to make me happy that I ruined my own real chance at happiness. Now my wife is dead and my daughter hates me well my husband is dead and my daughter pretends like she hates me i can definitely relate and then i convinced myself that this he gestures vaguely in my direction <laughs> was gonna make me happy why do i even try anymore yes I, this doesn't make anybody happy it doesn't even make me happy but i can try <laughs> i'm so sorry i know how hard it is to no, you don't. How could you possibly know how this feels? You did everything right. Your daughter loves, loves you. You're a good person. Okay, okay. You choking up or you yawning? <laughs> I was a terrible husband and I'm even worse of a father. I have no idea why she's even bothering to contact me now. I know I'm just gonna fuck it up like I always do. I'm broken. I shouldn't even go. I'm a robot. <laughs> Robert puts his head in his hands. Tell him what he wants to hear. Tell him what he needs to hear and walk. Well, I'm definitely not going to walk away. I've pushed it this far. Nothing is going to change until you do. Robert pauses. He looks at me. There are a lot of things in my life that I regret that I wish I could take back and do over. And it hurts so much to know that I can't. But what I do, and what you have the privilege of doing tomorrow, is to wake up and try to be a better person than you were the day before. It's never too late to be better, Gavin. The only reason we are who we are is because somebody gave us a chance to do better, and I'm the one who's giving you that chance. Things are gonna fix themselves tomorrow or the next day, and patching things up with Val isn't gonna solve your problems, but nothing is gonna change if you don't, and if you can't love anyone else, and you can't love anyone else until you stop hating yourself. I mean, I don't know if you could ever love me. I'm a very awkward teenage-looking robot, but you know, I hope. 
And you're right. I don't know you that well, but you have the same capacity for good that we all have, and I know you can find it. Dal has given you a chance. Don't waste it. But... Robert, listen to me. It's gonna be okay. But... I lean over and embrace him, pulling him in as tightly as I can. He buries his head in my shoulder, hugging me back. It's going to be okay. I'm putting on my dad voice now, okay? <laughs> Place a hand on the back of his head and stroke his hair. He shudders and sobs, and then I realize he's crying. I'm okay with emotional vulnerability. This is the best. Thank you. We stay there for a while holding each other and both eventually drift off to sleep. And you better not fucking yell at me tomorrow morning and kick me out when I make you eggs and toast, goddammit. Eggs and toast forever. Always use a coat of wax after a watch. Aha, look at him. All the daddy points. Hey! Hey! Because you, you said that stupid thing. I, I said one stupid thing. But is the overall rank an S? Oh, no. I don't I don't like that I went down. Okay. Run through the finish line. I hope I still got a good ending. No scram. <laughs> yes, don't yell scram in my face, please. Just let me meet your daughter. I always have time for a capital B with my buds. Capital B beer. Oh, no. Oh, no. Why are we not responding? There we go. Whew, I think I have everything finally set up. Amanda should be here any minute now. I think that's her car in the driveway. I wouldn't know what it looks like. I mean, it's not like I bought it for her or anything. Act natural. Be cool, Dines. Be cool. She walks through the door with a suspicious look on her face. Hey, Dad. Off to a good start. Something fishy? Oh, what, what do you smell? <laughs> Rats. You know, like the one I slept with last night. <laughs> Sorry, sweetie, it's the feds. Life of crime is finally catching up to you. I tried to send him in a different direction, but I'm no match for the power and funding of the U.S. government. Well, if they think they're gonna take me alive, they've got another thing coming. One of them is really cute. His name was Norman, I think. I got another thing coming. I'm kidding. You're right. I have a little surprise for you. It's not another cake, I promise. Amanda, my dear, would you care to join me in the kitchen? Oh, God, it is a cake, isn't it? <laughs> I lead her over to the kitchen table where a present lies covered under a tablecloth. Well, we've done... It's a table! <gasps> <laughs> For your new dorm! Something special, but I wanted to get you a little something. You graduated high school, and I know you told me not to make a big deal out of it, but... Aw, oh, Dad, you... I dramatically whip the cloth off the table, and her jaw drops. Yeah. No way! I figure you probably won't be able to get cable in the dorm, so I thought it might be nice to take a piece of home with you. Our kitchen table. <laughs> oh. A DVD box set of long-haul paranormal ice road truck ghost truckers. This is all 19 seasons. And bonus material, including commentary with the actual ghosts. Dad, I love this. Thank you. So, I met a ghost hunter last night, and he's really suave, and you haven't met him yet, but I think that um, he's going to live here now. <laughs> she gives me a hug. I'm glad you like it. Hey, you want to hang out with me in the backyard for a bit? Toss the old pigskin or something? Totally. I follow her to the back door. You can't. <laughs> so, yeah, look oh at my oh god, my god, all this these men. It's all your friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, Amanda, since you don't have friends anymore, I just took the liberty of inviting all of mine, including the one who's your teacher and the one who's a vampire. <laughs> you told me not to make a big deal, but you seem to have forgotten my entire mission in life is to make a big deal out of your accomplishments and also to embarrass you and also to... Um, flirt with every man I meet. So, so consider this your graduation party. Surprise! Dad, everyone's here. Yes, gang's all here. Well, well, yeah. Everyone wanted to come and support you. Even Brian. He's just doing scope and recon to see how he can one-up me with his daughter next. Is that a mac and cheese bar? Sure, sure is. Fully customizable, down to the type of mac. Just don't put some fucking breadcrumbs in it because we're not heathens. There's an ice cream hey, cake. Ice cream cake. The good kind with the crunchies in the middle and not egg. Yes. <laughs> Crunchy eggshells. Don't say anything. Just go have fun with your pals, all right? All the fellas. <laughs> I have been on dad book for a while. I'm so proud of you, Amanda. <laughs> she smiles and runs to her friends. What friends? She has no friends. We've established this. I should make the rounds and make sure everyone's having a good time. 
But first, mac and cheese. I walk over to Mary, who's having a lively conversation with Amanda. Be gone, thought! <sighs> Listen, kid. You're gonna need some real life skills out there if you gotta make it in the streets. I don't want to be a no, woman no, in the streets. No, 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 not street smarts. Go. We did. I'm going to away. College. She's going to college. Get away. Same thing. Look, I know you're not old enough to drink. Mm -hmm. Right. And I know you're smart enough not to drink until you're of legal age. Whatever. Uh huh. Uh, but hypothetically, if you were to drink, it'd behoove you to drink water between rounds. One water for every drink. Probably two waters. Probably two, because you're it. tiny. Okay. Uh, hypothetically. And if you wake up with a headache, all you gotta do is make a big plate of potatoes and like crack an egg over it. It'll be great. Mm. Take a jar of pickles and drink the pickles. No, that's when you're pregnant. I've done it four times. You're gonna be fine. <laughs> What's going on here? Girl talk. I thought the pickle juice was so you could pass the THC test. What? <laughs> How would you know that? I just thought that's what it was for. <laughs> Mary turns back to Amanda. Ah. Now let me tell you how to deal with bad roommate. First thing, you get straight A's if they die during you get straight A's if they die during the semester. Mary! Ugh. Relax, it's a myth. Hey. Supposedly. I mean, you could try it. I whatever. I guess my better judgment, I leave them be. <laughs> I don't recognize that very, very attractive woman by the snack table. I should go say hello. Hi, I don't think we've met. I'm new in town. I'm new at you're new in town. Hello. We met years ago, and I'm here for my revenge. What? Oh, you must be Robert's kid. I'm your new dad. <laughs> <laughs> Spot on. Guess that makes you nines, huh? Hundreds. Nines, hundreds. Yes, Mr. You're, hundreds to you. Your new dad. It's like the reverse of what happened in that school. Okay. Yeah, it's nice to meet ya. I don't think you're pretty. I'm glad Robert brought you along. Oh shit, she's hot. <laughs> he promised me there'd be free food, so that's kind of hard to pass up. And look, I don't know you, but I can- Can I get real with you for a sec? My old man's a real closed book, you know? Me and him, we got a long way to go. You don't erase decades of neglect in a week, but you sure get tired of staying angry about it. That kind of bitterness, it poisons you, I think. I'm too young for that. Anyway, lately he's been better, a lot better. And between him shaving for once and how much he talks about you, I get the feeling that you have something to do with it. So, thanks. Robert means a lot to me. I'm glad he's getting better. Just keep an eye on him while I'm not around, okay? Or else... What? What? I'm kidding. <laughs> or am I? Oh, I see where she gets it from. <laughs> you know, she, she she looks like our Val, our Valerie, our, our, our Valerie Morales Chin. Do you have a wife named Tina? <laughs> are you both Gavin's, are you, are you, have you been Gavin's daughter this whole time? <laughs> I'm so confused. Time travel. I don't know why I'm like this. I do. I think yeah, I, I know why. Amanda trots up to the conversation. Mm -hmm. Hey, I love your necklace. And your hair. Mm -hmm. And just, geez, your whole vibe is cool. Don't flirt with her, you're gonna be sisters. Thanks. I like your jacket. My girlfriend collects pins too. She does have a girlfriend who collects pins. She's with Tina Chen, that's it. Oh, this is my daughter, Amanda. Amanda, this is Robert's daughter, Val, who is apparently also into girls. Please, uh, you're gonna be sisters. Don't make this weird. Nice meeting you. I heard you're a photographer. Yeah. Aspiring photographer. I'm going to school for it. You take pictures? Yes. Then you're a photographer. Welcome to the biz. Val hands Amanda a business card. Nepotism! If you're ever looking for internships, shoot me an email. Anyway, I need to go make friends with that woman over there who's dual wielding wine glasses. Catch it later. No, I, I don't advise it. Cirrhosis. Ah, uh, she walks away. She's so cool. She gave me her business card. She touched my hand. Yes, she's very pretty, but she's she's not for me. Or you. <laughs> she's like halfway between our ages. It doesn't work. Congrats, you just networked for the first time. I'm a regular business lady now. <laughs> Emma R is quaking. <laughs> Quarterly projection, stock market, synergy. While you're making a fortune as a businesswoman, I gotta keep this party going. Catch your round. Pops. 
Oh god. <laughs> god. Nines. Brian, you made it. You're not my arch rival <laughs> oh, I at all. Pass up a good Mac. Yeah, no, the food. Yeah, the food's great. What do you think of the party? It's not bad. Oh, not bad, huh? Yeah, yeah, just not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. Mm, don't let him bait you. Don't let him bait you. Well, thank you for the lovely compliment. Daisy trots up. Oh, hello, smaller Brian. <laughs> Hi, Amanda's dad. Hi, Brian's daughter. See? See how that feels? I have a name. It's 900. It's, it's, a, it's a human name. <laughs> this is a really great party. Thanks for inviting us. You're welcome, tiny child who knows how to play compliments. Stares at Brian. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, bro. Hey, roommate. Bro. This is a real rager. Taking our older age into consideration. We all look 25. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm trying to be in bed at a reasonable hour tonight. Don't let me get too wild. Even though my boyfriend is now a... Oh, he's a wild thing. I tell you what. Hey. Don't worry, dude. I'll keep an eye on your fruit punch intake. Me too, dude. Briar and Hazel peek out from behind. Oh my god, I've got a whole crew Oh my god, you have, you have other... Oh, that's right. You have twins. They're cute. Hi, little ones. Hello. Hiya. Hiya. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you. Oh. <laughs> for the ice cream cake. Wait, girls. How much of that did you Don't eat? Don't make them run it off. Briar ate four pieces. Ask any witness. No, I didn't. I either ate four pieces and wants to pin it on me. We look like. I have your face. Nobody will ever believe you. Oh, boy. I'll let you guys figure that out. Good seeing you, Craig. Let's hang soon. Yeah, as long as it doesn't involve exercise. Oh. Totally. Tell Amanda congrats for us. Oh, God. Looks like you've settled into the neighborhood quite nicely. Yep, couldn't ask for a better cul-de-sac. Well, I'm glad. Hopefully, we'll see you more at church events. Not a chance. <laughs> Got a big schedule planned for the rest of the year. Sure thing, Joseph. Maybe you aren't doing anything later. We could hang out sometime. I have a boyfriend. That'd be great. See you later. Hugo comes up to me with a plate of mac and cheese. Oh. The perfect cheddar to mac ratio. Beautiful work, nice. Oh, I didn't make it. I definitely catered it. You know, I'm really pleased to see Amanda do going to her dream school. I'm glad she turned around for finals. <gasps> sure thing, Joseph, he said, like a liar. <laughs> That's great, Warden. <laughs> Me too. That scholarship money will really help. It'll make a whole $10,000 dent in her $100,000 debt. Amanda walks by and pretends not to see Hugo. Noom. Noom. <laughs> Amanda, say hi to your teacher. Hey. Congratulations on graduating. <laughs> graduating? <laughs> I know you're going to do great at art school. Finger good uh, bisexual, hi. yay! Yeah, thanks. <laughs> she starts to back away. Wait, I, reali I realize that you're not my teacher anymore. I don't have to be afraid of talking to you. You are no longer hold power over oh. me. You're right. Go forth, adults. I can no longer give you detention. Yeah, I'm going to break anything I want. There's nothing you can do about it. Are you still mad about the time I gave you detention for breaking my globe? It's 2020. Who has globes anymore? You're an English teacher. Oh. <laughs> and I'll have you know that globe didn't even fit through the basketball hoop in the first place, so. Well, she'll fit into college fine. Oh, yeah. Hello, hey, barista. Man. So, are you haunted? I heard a story. <laughs> Let me know when... Uh, Amanda leaves for college. I'll have a fresh batch right said banana bread ready for her. I thought we talked that we were going to call it Bananas Foster the People. Thank <laughs> you. I know she'll love it. Oh. What a splendid garden party. My deepest thanks for extending an invitation to my son and I. Your son. <laughs> oh, yes, your son. Yeah, thanks, dude. Good cake. Ah, your son. Thanks for coming by. Damien and his son, who I have never met. As the party starts to wind down, I take our seat on the back porch step. The sun is setting. Everyone has eaten their fill. Amanda wanders over and sits down next to me. Killer party, Pops. Yes, all of these adult men and their children. I was inspired. 
So, I, uh, I also have something for you. And also with, for me? <laughs> <laughs> for me? Why? Not to be completely genuine about my feelings for once or anything, but growing up wasn't easy, but it could have been a lot harder if it wasn't for you. Like if other dad died and I didn't have you, I would have been homeless. That would have been very bad. Dad, you've been there through me through everything. There's been times in my life where you were my only friend. Like, like the present? Like like a couple weeks ago. I was really uh, scared of going to college and being so far away from you, but I realized that everything you've done for me has prepared me for this, and I'm ready. It's only a 14-hour drive away. I wouldn't be who I am without you. Don't cry, don't cry. I swear to God, nines if you cry again. You're the best, dad. That's That's Maximilian's mood in every scene on Detroit I Evolution. I love you. And I'm crying. Anyway, that was enough emotional vulnerability for one day. Present time. She hands me a tiny wrap package. I tear the wrapping off to find a framed picture of me and Amanda. It's us! <laughs> Kind of shocking that all our photo albums are just pictures of me, huh? I figured we needed something of at least one together before I leave. Amanda, thank you. When did you take this? Watch it. Yeah, when? How did I not realize? This is Photoshop? Watching you grow up is going to be great, I suppose. Knock him dead. Always do. Amanda and I share leave a no hug. no survivors. This is... <laughs> only the beginning, Pops. Plenty of more memories, you know? Uh, memories to make and stuff to break, right? That's that I always Yes, say. yes, you're going to go to school and be an arsonist anarchist. We talked about this. Oh, I'm gonna break so much stuff, intentionally and unintentionally. You're probably gonna have to pay for most of it. It would be my honor. Hell, you know, I've started some fires in my day. Broken some windows just a couple weeks ago on a date. She hops up. <laughs> Looks like someone's been waiting to talk to you. Oh, is it Robert? I glance over to the back of the yard where Robert is sitting on a bench beneath our cherry blossom tree. He smiles at me. Ah. I'll leave you to it. Me and the Emmas are going to eat ice Wait, cream. what? The Emmas? I thought you... Since when are you Love friends you with pops. them again? What? What? What about... Ne You're better than them! Oh, wow. This is so pretty, Robert. You're very pretty. I take a seat. I... Hey. Hey. Robert gestures vaguely to the snack table. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I went all out. Got the, got the gourmet stuff. Yep. So, I, I had a chance to talk to Val. Oh, I haven't. She physically threatened you. Uh, yes, yes. Mm, that's my girl. Yeah, yeah, it is. She said you've been doing better. Uh, trying to work on my vices. Uh, well, hating yourself is the one that should probably go first. I also showered today. That's great. That's a good start. We sit in silence for a moment. Mm -hmm. You know, every day for me is a battle against my own self-destructive habits. But lately, it's gotten a little easier. Mm -hmm. Thanks for talking some sense into me. It's hard to get things through my thick skull sometimes, but what you said that night actually helped. I'm glad. Mm -hmm. I like you, Nines. I like you a lot. Ah, yeah, your mouth said that last night. <laughs> I haven't felt this way about someone in a long time. I lean in and kiss him for a moment before he pulls away. He takes my hand in his. So, you're special to me. Oh, I'm very special. Mm -hmm. But I have some stuff I need to work on uh, emotionally before I can get into anything romantic oh, with you. Oh, no, no, no. You deserve no, better no, than who no, I am. No, right no, no, no. Robert. Robert. I need to be on my own for a bit. Figure things out. Oh. Uh, of course. I think what you need right now is a friend. I'm very happy to be that for you. Thank you. That means a lot to me. And if you're ever ready for more than that, you know where to find me. Right next door to you. <laughs> Let's hunt ghosts sometimes. I would love that. I put my head on his shoulder and we watch the sun slowly dip below the horizon together. Pay your bills. <laughs> oh, crap. I owe a bill. Oh, uh, yep. Oh, ah, crap. there you go. There you go. That is a sweet ending. I mean, it's, you know, like... Watch the damn credits. Watch the damn credits. 
Executive producers Aaron Hansen and Brett Liley. Aaron's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, you get all the all the. Oh, Ray, Ray Navarez Jr. was Hugo. Okay. Uh, and For what? Huh? And uh, Dan uh, is Danny Sexbang is Robert. I think that's who that is. Cool. Yes, this was made by the Game Grumps, so there's a lot of... Wait, there's an extra scene, apparently? Okay, Caroline, I'll, I'll stick with it. I'll stick with it. We'll, we'll, we'll watch the credits like Robert would want us to. Um, so, obviously, that's the end of one route. There are multiple bad endings that you can get with Robert, and you can go back and sleep with him early in the beginning of the game and then not romance him. I might try that at some point. Um... And then there's six other dads, five other dads that you can romance that are completely other plot lines that all have their own. There's a lot in this game we have not seen yet. Um, I definitely will be playing this again at least once, probably not next week. Uh, a radio mini game and a piano mini game. Yeah, I did. Well, we got the whittling mini game. Thank ski you, ball? Akuma. You get to play ski ball. There's a golf mini game. Who do we get to play golf with? Fishing. Fuck fishing. I'm skipping that yes, one. Fishing mini Concert. Games. Who gets to, gargoyle minigame? Gar what is a gargoyle? Who, who do we get gargoyles with? Oh, probably, probably the vampire, probably Damien. Running minigame? Oh no, fuck that. Fuck you, Craig. <laughs> I know that's Craig. Golf minigame. Brian has both the fishing and the golf. Oh, no, that's not worth the trade-off. <laughs> this is not DVP by Pup. Oh, I love, I love all of these, uh, these songs here. Quality assurance. They worked very hard making sure that this was very great. <laughs> goth dad is best dad so yes i think the goth dad would probably be the next one i would try I, i'm i would i'm in, i'm interested in, in damien i think i would i think i would go with for damien um i'm not really interested in craig or joseph or brian um because i don't like running or grilling or colts or the whole or fishing so <laughs> but i think that damien and matt are pretty cool i would go for for them next um and then maybe hugo, hugo like hugo's got some hugo's probably interesting i don't know much about him really he's probably the one i know the least about <gasps> oh that's the picture of us you look like a dork i do look like a dork look at me posing like a model she's just being a menace <laughs> oh what is this <gasps> oh Pretty picture of Robert, too, in the back of his truck with his cute little dog and some whiskey, and he's whittling a picture of his dog. I'm not a model. The camera turned on by itself, yes. Okay. Is this the beginning again? Dead Avengers assemble. Dead Avengers. Oh, yeah, there's actually six more that you can romance, yeah. The end. Oh, no. We're just at the beginning again. Just at the menu. What did the director's cut? I don't know what the dad rector's cut. Yeah, like, this is the dad rector's cat cut, and I don't know what that, um, means. <laughs> like, I don't know what content has been added to this that has, like, wasn't in the original version. There definitely are... Oh, the little chats in between are new. Interesting. Oh, the little, um... Text messages. I, I I play the whittling mini game if you want. It's I really suppose. a game. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it was. Yeah, it was. It was more of a simulator. Uh, the little bubbles on dad. Uh, so the dad book stuff is new. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah. So I think uh, next week. What is next week? Next week is September 18th. So it won't be quite time for Untitled Goose Co-op. That would be two weeks from now. I don't know what we're going to do next week. Maybe we can get together around a Dead by Daylight. Maybe we'll uh, find something else. Maybe we'll go back to Animal Crossing because I think there's a fall update soon, yeah, isn't it's there? Yeah, fall now there. Okay. And well, if you want, we can always visit other people's islands with the Dream Island. Visit yeah, there's, there's new stuff in Animal Crossing. I'll, maybe I'll do a poll and just see what everybody wants because... I don't know. It's like a one week thing. Um, but the most important thing is next week, I'm actually going to be starting Tell Me Why, that new game from Don't Nod, um, new episodic story driven game, much like Life is Strange. Uh, that's going to be Thursdays at 10 in the Walking Dead time slot, the series time slot. The only thing about that is it's going to be on YouTube instead of Twitch. I'm going to experiment with YouTube gaming. I'm just going to be changing platforms, but it's still Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern, and every episode is going to be um, kind of long, I've heard. 
record on that on that game and it's like three three and a half hour long episodes they're gonna be long but it's not gonna be for three weeks because there's three episodes of that so uh yeah tell me why i'm excited about that uh oh you gotta you gotta download the secret ending. there is a secret ending to this which is apparently very cursed i don't know um but I could probably be spending this, I could, I could do 10 streams of this game. There's so much content in this game that you can explore and stuff. I don't think I want to do the bad endings with Robert just because I don't want to see. I don't want to live the bad endings. I don't want to live the bad endings. I want to I wanna live in my universe where me and Robert are very happy together. I can't handle them. Uh, so yeah, uh, tomorrow at noon, uh, he's going to be doing a Seven Deadly Synths stream, Seven Deadly Synths music stream mostly going to be you talking about the score from the film and how that came together and taking you behind the scenes of that. And then Monday, of course, Apu at 2 p.m. I'm going to be announcing on Apu a new art contest or, con or well, more like an event, art event that we're going to be doing. Um, so it's not going to be anything as big as DE Art Fest. Don't worry. Don't sweat. Uh, but it is going to be something that is based on some stuff that we've kind of noticed in the community that we've really enjoyed and i want to maybe encourage more of and see more of so uh yeah that'll be on monday at 2 p.m eastern so come to apu to find out what that is going to be thanks for joining us for both episodes of dream daddy we had a lot of fun with this uh and as always stay great hydrate and have a happy time zone bye